Hey there! In this video, we're diving into an upcoming terrain system in GTA 6, brought to you by Rockstar Games. Additionally, we'll explore some cool graphics enhancements like ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting slated for the next GTA. The scoop comes straight from an official patent filed by Take-Two Interactive Rockstar's parent company. So let's kick things off by checking out the patent titled Method and Apparatus for Enhanced Graphics Rendering in a Video Game Environment. According to Rockstar Games, the rendering of real-time graphics usually happens happens in a pipeline setup like this one. At the core of it, the process kicks off by handling 3D vertex information, moving on to render pixel-level details like light color and shadows. In the current systems, one or more shaders are employed for this pixel-level rendering. These shaders are essentially programs that operate on the GPU. The challenge in rendering lies in finding the right balance between realism and detail, while ensuring smooth performance, aiming for that higher frame rate. For example, a virtual world should illustrate various terrains that mirror a number of lifelike geographical areas. Each of these terrains can provide unique interactions with a virtual character in the video game. By way of example, a virtual player traveling through sand or snow should leave footprints that are different than the virtual player walking down a concrete sidewalk. However, because of the number of various terrains that need be accounted for, and the unique behavior of each terrain, Conventional graphics systems do not have enough processing power to account for dynamic terrain and the associated interaction with players of the game. So, Rockstar Games developed a shader system for efficiently rendering various types of terrain with high realism. Let's take a peek at the system. The world level map, visible in the bottom right, outlines all the different dynamic terrains, such as muddy, sandy, grassy, hard ground, snowy, and more. Take a gander at this world level map showcasing the diverse terrains. Now, let's explore the various dynamic terrain zones within the game world. Using Red Dead Redemption 2 as an illustration, this world level map plays a pivotal role in determining the terrain that players or NPCs interact with. Essentially, it acts as the foundation to generate a trail map. Think of a trail map as a record of all the imprints left behind by characters, vehicles, and other objects, like the aftermath of explosions. Take this image, for instance, showcasing how the snow has been altered by the actions of this NPC. Different shaders of the shader system are used for different terrain types and with different trail map types. For example, basic terrains do not require special shaders, while shallow mud terrains can advantageously benefit from a parallax surface shader to efficiently show ruts and tracks in the terrain with a high detail trail map. As an additional example, deep mud terrain may use a tessellation surface shader to model the ruts and tracks in the mud. You might be aware that in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can leave realistic footprints in the snow and mud. Rockstar explained that they employ two shaders for this effect parallax maps, and desolation. These shaders create a convincing illusion of high-level deformation, where footprints appear on the terrain surface. In reality, the surface is warped, but not physically deformed, ensuring a smooth and polished movement experience. In GTA 6, they're applying the same technique to bring an extra layer of realism. This will be particularly noticeable with explosions, firing RPGs at the ground, walking through mud, or driving vehicles through it, each leaving distinct tracks based on the terrain. RPGs, for instance, will create crazy on the ground. This adds a significant level of interactivity, making it feel like you're genuinely impacting the game world in real time. Despite it being an illusion, the result will be remarkably realistic, akin to the snow in Red Dead Redemption 2. To sum it up, this graphics rendering patent encompasses the dynamic terrain, ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting, all exciting new features making their way to GTA 6. Rockstar has invented and patented new graphics rendering systems, which aims to fix some of the problems of traditional graphics rendering systems to make graphics rendering more efficient, thus improving performance and allowing for better, more realistic, and more immersive visuals. Dynamic Terrain System This is a system that records and creates trail maps which make it possible that terrains can be visually deformed when being interacted with in various ways. Players, NPCs, vehicles, objects, and explosions can affect the terrain. For example, leaving footprints or vehicle tracks in sand can be seen in action in Trailer 1. Explosions will leave craters in the terrain as well. It's also possible for certain changes to the terrain to disappear over time. For example, footprints and tracks in mud disappearing after some time since the viscosity velocity of mud makes it return to its normal state after some time. There are different types of terrains, for example, muddy, sandy, hard ground, grassy or snowy terrain. Each type of terrain will react differently. A sandy terrain will be more easily deformed than a grassy terrain, for example. In the initial part of our video, we delved into the rendering pipeline, which also incorporates a lighting stage. While conventional systems often utilize cube maps for pre-rendering lighting, it's worth noting that this is mainly for static elements. When it comes to dynamic characters, pre-computed lighting falls short in accommodating changes from objects within the scene. Although ambient occlusion can be pre-baked, 
It lacks the capability to update dynamically. Realism takes a hit due to this. Conventional systems often incorporate static lights to mimic reflected light, like sunlight bouncing off the ground and under a table. However, this static approach fails to update with changes in the light source. To address these challenges, Rockstar has patented new systems. Ambient Occlusion This is a graphics technique that can be utilized in multiple forms to determine how light and shading are displayed on an object. It can lead to darkened areas, enhanced contrast, and improved surfaces due to this technology. This patent's ambient occlusion system offers some special advantages. Determined by either preset or randomized assets based on developer discretion, the lighting can greatly provide a new vision to world building to make certain areas stand out, akin to a real-life setting. Global Illumination Global Illumination is a graphics rendering technique that models how light is bounced off of surfaces onto other surfaces in direct light, rather than being limited to just the light that hits a surface directly from a light source, direct light. Rockstar system detailed in this patent uses a bounce map that is projected in a top-down fashion to determine reflected light off of the ground. This bounce map is then converted into a texture that provides an approximation for the expected bounce back of light. This simulates the effect that would be achieved rendering the multiple passes of lighting to account for the natural bounce reflections. The bounce map can then be integrated into the lighting pipeline. During this, a technique is used to determine the area that needs this extra pass for each frame. This way, only the visible and required area is rendered with this technique thus making it very efficient and less performance intensive. Overall, this provides many of the benefits of ray tracing without the computational expense. Ray traced global illumination will probably still be in the game. For example, Lucia prison clip in trailer one. This special system is just a way to render large scale global illumination efficiently. Now, let's touch on the final problem that Rockstar has addressed through this patent with conventional systems. Finally, as another example, to develop a rich and engaging game world, it is advantageous to populate the world with variations of similar objects. In other words, you do not want every simulated person, cow, gun, car, cart, ship, or animal generated in the game to look the same. Because the 3D model for many of these objects would be identical, variation was traditionally accomplished by creating different texture files to paint a different look on the object. For example, two variants of a cow model could be created, one with a texture to create a brown cow, and the other with a texture to create a black cow. These prior art systems created the desired variety at the cost of artist time, computer memory, and resources to maintain a multitude of different hand-authored variants for each in-game object. To combat this, Rockstar is introducing material tinting. RDR2 had a system that could tint the color of clothes to create far more variations on NPCs. This new patent is an evolution of that system and allows for creating of several in-game object variants from a single model. It can not only modify an object's colors, but other material properties, such as metalness and lighting parameters, or add additional layers to it, such as mud, snow, or dust as well. Envision the extent of customization that awaits in this game. When we talk about the positive aspects of this partnership, it's essential to highlight the potential benefits that can emerge from Rockstar's newfound support for the modding community. One of the significant upsides is the acknowledgement of the brilliant and skilled developers behind the modding scene. For years, these developers have worked tirelessly to create unique and engaging experiences within the GTA universe. With Rockstar stepping into a collaborative space with CFX, there's an opportunity for a more symbiotic relationship. The infusion of official support could mean more resources, tools, and encouragement for modders to continue pushing the boundaries of what's possible within the GTA ecosystem. This collaboration might lead to innovative gameplay features, improved server stability, and an overall better experience for both players and content creators. Moreover, the recognition from a gaming giant like Rockstar could open doors for these modders in the industry. It may pave the way for potential collaborations, official partnerships, or even job opportunities within the gaming development sphere. This, in turn, could elevate the modding community to a more prominent and respected position within the gaming landscape. However, it's crucial to approach these potential benefits with cautious optimism. While the partnership appears promising on the surface, the reality lies in how Rockstar manages the delicate balance between maintaining control over its intellectual property and allowing creative freedom for the modding community. The outcome will heavily depend on Rockstar's willingness to foster collaboration, rather than imposing strict regulations. As GTA 6 draws closer, the impact of this collaboration will become more apparent. Whether it becomes a model for future partnerships between game developers and modders, or encounters challenges that hinder its success remains to be seen. The dynamics between Rockstar and the modding community could shape the future landscape of custom servers, roleplay experiences, 
and the overall modding scene in the gaming world. Stay tuned as we continue to explore and analyze the evolving relationship between Rockstar and the modding community. On the positive side, there's a glimmer of hope that Rockstar's acknowledgement of mods enhancing the player experience could pave the way for more modding support in GTA 6. This shift in perspective might lead to a more collaborative environment, where modders can contribute to the game's richness without fear of stringent restrictions. With Rockstar officially and financially supporting 5M, the CFX team gains more resources to elevate the GTA 6 server. This could mean a server even more impressive than the ones they currently run. The fact that 5M is now a Rockstar Games product suggests a vested interest in its success, promising additional funding and manpower to ensure its flourishing. An intriguing prospect emerges concerning the accessibility of custom servers. Currently limited to PC players, there's speculation that GTA 6 might integrate dedicated servers within the game itself eliminating the need for external programs like 5M. If this unfolds, it opens the door for console players to join the custom server experience, broadening the player base and community. Moreover, Rockstar seems to be attuned to fan desires. Despite a larger audience watching RP compared to those actively playing it, Rockstar appears committed to making improvements. Their intent to let custom servers thrive suggests a more fan-centric approach, acknowledging and catering to the desires of the gaming community. However, there are potential pitfalls to consider. The most glaring concern is Rockstar's inclination to monetize these servers. While the specifics remain uncertain, it's almost certain that some form of monetization, be it through custom server shark cards or a pay-to-play system, will be implemented. This could introduce a paywall, affecting the accessibility and enjoyment of custom servers for certain players. As we navigate through this evolving landscape of Rockstar's partnership with 5M, the delicate balance between fostering creativity and implementing monetization strategies will determine the ultimate impact on the gaming community. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the complexities of this collaboration and its implications for GTA 6 and the modding community. Let's unpack this a bit more. The whole monetization story got its moment in the spotlight during an earnings report where Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick spilled the beans. He essentially said, if folks are messing around with our intellectual property, why not make a buck or two? It's a straightforward business move, really. Taking a page from the unprecedented success of GTA Online, it seems like Rockstar caught a glimpse of how these free servers could turn into a money-making machine. Now the potential downside of this situation lies in the realm of competition. Rockstar's got its A-team working on the custom servers gig. That means anyone outside the Rockstar circle trying to whip up something akin to 5M is practically painting a target on themselves for a cease and desist. Let's face it, Rockstar might have eyed this strategic move with 5M from the get-go. However, with those servers gaining crazy popularity and the game becoming a sensation on Twitch and YouTube, shutting it down wouldn't have been the smart play. Instead, they pulled off a masterstroke, acquiring the team behind the biggest servers, effectively cornering the market and positioning themselves to profit from any potential imitators. Now, with GTA 6 on the horizon and servers in the works, Rockstar's sitting pretty. Some in the gaming community are even giving them a nod for finally throwing a bone to the community. But, and there's always a but, at the end of the day, Rockstar's the one making the rules. We'll all have to toe the line because, quite frankly, there won't be any other alternatives in the neighborhood. So, buckle up for Rockstar's GTA roleplay. It's going to be a wild ride. The landscape has already witnessed the repercussions, with servers and mods being handed the shutdown ticket for not playing by Rockstar's latest rulebook. The new mandates include a strict no to real-life vehicles, mission mods, and porting old Rockstar maps or assets rules that weren't in the playbook just a couple of years back. Now, while the financial backing from a mega corporation might seem like a savvy move on the surface, there's a lingering skepticism about whether it'll blossom into the fairy tale ending we've all been envisioning. It's a bit premature to slap a final verdict on the fate of 5M once GTA 6 hits the stage. Now, let's consider the potential repercussions for the vibrant RP community. While the partnership between Rockstar and 5M could bring about positive changes, there's an underlying worry within the RP enthusiasts. The fear is that with increased control and potential monetization, the organic and immersive RP experiences that players have come to love might face disruptions. RP communities thrive on creativity, flexibility, and a sense of autonomy. If Rockstar's influence leads to more rigid guidelines, it could alter the dynamic of these communities, potentially affecting the unique narratives and interactions that make RP servers so engaging. As we contemplate the potential impact, it's essential to look beyond the immediate horizon of GTA 6. The dynamics established through this collaboration could set a precedent for future interactions between gaming giants and modding communities across various games. 
Whether it becomes a model to be emulated or a cautionary tale will be closely watched by both players and industry stakeholders. The future of 5M and the broader modding community remains uncertain as GTA 6 inches closer to release. While concerns exist, there's also room for hope. The collaboration might lead to a harmonious blend of official support and community-driven creativity, enhancing the gaming experience for everyone involved. As players, content creators and modders navigate this uncharted territory, the one constant is the love for the game and the shared hope for a positive evolution in the gaming landscape. Taking a stroll down memory lane, Rockstar's track record with monetization doesn't exactly calm the nerves. Add to that the current scenario where they're laying down the law for the CFX team, dictating what's permissible and what's not. This conjures up a cloud of uncertainty regarding the future of both 5M servers and the broader modding community. Personally, I'm a big fan of RP servers and that immersive content. It's my cup of tea. The idea that the same company that set the stage with GTA 5 might potentially tarnish 5M, turning it into a monetized maze with no alternatives, that's a bit of a buzzkill. We're delving into the realm of GTA 6 Online, the upcoming multiplayer aspect of Rockstar Games' Grand Theft Auto 6. We'll dissect all the insights gathered from leaks back in 2022, alongside an intriguing anti-cheat patent filed by Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two Interactive. This patent offers a glimpse into how the forthcoming online experience aims to ensure a safer environment compared to the current GTA Online. Furthermore, we'll explore a novel method Rockstar plans to implement in GTA 6 for managing online sessions. This innovation promises to infuse the expansive world of GTA 6 with a livelier atmosphere, enriching the player's immersion in its intricacies. Undoubtedly, GTA Online stands as a titan in the realm of multiplayer gaming. Its enduring popularity has significantly contributed to the ongoing success of GTA 5 over the past 11 years. This success owes much to Rockstar's astute strategy, crafting a robust core game with GTA 5 and then supplementing it with regular content updates for the online segment. By continually introducing new weapons, vehicles and attire, Rockstar keeps players engaged and motivated to accumulate in-game currency. As we eagerly anticipate the official unveiling of GTA 6, players are hopeful that it will address prevalent issues plaguing the current iteration. Chief among these concerns is the rampant presence of modders and cheaters, whose actions not only disrupt gameplay, but also pose security risks by unlawfully accessing personal data. To tackle this issue, Rockstar has devised a fresh approach set to debut in GTA 6. This method aims to bolster the game's security measures. The patent responsible for this enhancement is titled Method and Apparatus for Preventing Cheating in a Video Game Environment by Providing Obfuscated Game Variables. Filed by Take-Two Interactive, Rockstar's parent company, in 2019, this patent outlines a system and method aimed at curbing cheating within video game environments. By disguising game variables in memory, the patent seeks to thwart attempts by players to monitor and manipulate values such as health, ammunition, and in-game currency for unfair advantages. Traditionally, developers combat such exploits by encrypting, coding, or obfuscating the location of these values, alongside implementing integrity checks to detect unauthorized modifications. However, these methods have drawbacks, as they often impact game performance and inadvertently expose variable locations to savvy attackers. Rockstar's innovation lies in masking the whereabouts of these variables, offering a more robust defense against cheating in GTA 6's online. I won't delve into the technical intricacies, but essentially, Rockstar employs a clever and seemingly straightforward technique to conceal these values. This makes it considerably tougher for attackers to pinpoint their locations. While the concept of masking values may seem straightforward, its effectiveness in bolstering stability and enhancing security for the future online segment is paramount. Moving forward, let's turn our attention to the next patent, titled System and Method for Session Management in a Multiplayer Network Gaming Environment. Filed by T2 Interactive in 2021, this patent addresses Disclosed Our Systems and Methods for Session Management. The Disclosed System allows for seamless merging and splitting of network sessions in a multiplayer network gaming environment. Seamless session management allows dynamic movement of players in a virtual world during gameplay without unnecessary loading and or stalling. As the players in the virtual world move around, the management of active game sessions can be improved to affect a more realistic perceived population. In this patent, Rockstar highlights the crucial role of online components 
in the success of many games, citing GTA Online as an example. They emphasize the challenges of managing network technology and resources to create a vibrant virtual world. Traditional MMO games often face limitations in session management, with some opting for single sessions that may restrict the depth of content due to increasing player counts. Others utilize multiple sessions, which can hinder feasibility, especially in peer-to-peer -peer exchanges like in GTA Online. To address these issues, Rockstar has developed a pioneering system for seamless session management. This innovative approach enables fluid splitting and merging of network sessions, allowing for a more immersive virtual world free from hardware and software constraints. Allowing players from different sessions, but in the same virtual area of the map, for example, to be merged into a single session. This allows players from previously different sessions to come across one another, thereby making the virtual world seem more populated. As an additional advantage, seamless session merging handles many network failures silently. In prior art systems, a player who loses network connectivity can be kicked out of a session and may not be able to rejoin because they are in a session by themselves. However, the Session Management System 100 allows for a disconnected player to exist in a session by themselves for a predetermined period before they are reconnected to the remaining players in the session or can be joined with another session. The method begins with monitoring a triggering event. In some embodiments, the triggering event defines when to merge two sessions or split a single session. For example, when the object, virtual players, are in the same session, move physically apart from another. The object by a predetermined virtual distance, this triggers the session management system to split the session into two different sessions. Likewise, if objects from two different sessions are within a predetermined virtual distance from one another, the session management system and merge the sessions to allow interaction between objects of the respective sessions. Other instances of monitored triggering events encompass various player and object actions, including changes in position or visibility, player entries and exits from the virtual world, and game-related activities like mission completions or tutorial beginnings. Rockstar's solution ensures seamless management of these events, preventing inconsistencies such as duplicated objects during session transitions. This approach accounts for factors like virtual geography, team management, networking resources, and social relationships to maintain continuity across sessions. For example, once a session is split, there can be two sessions, each with their own distinct copy of an object. Avoiding this split can avoid players that intentionally duplicate valuable objects to exploit virtual game economics. If these two sessions were to later merge, there can then be two identical objects in the same session. In this manner, the session management system advantageously avoids object duplication when two players are merged following a split. I trust that I've conveyed this information clearly. The implementation of this new system in GTA 6 promises to enhance the game's atmosphere, ensuring a more bustling world while maintaining a high level of detail throughout. Now, let's delve into what we've learned about GTA Online from the leaks of 2022. Multiplayer. In the bottom left in one of the clips, one can see there are two players in a 30-player lobby. This is because there are two slots for spectators, similar to GTA Online and Red Dead Online. There is also a reference to the script host. After that, there is a code which is either the session host or game master. Based on the information gathered, it seems probable that peer-to-peer -peer connections and 30-player lobbies will make a comeback in GTA 6 Online. However, there's a twist in how sessions will operate, allowing for seamless transitions between them. A group of passionate GTA fans have been diving deep into GTA 6 gameplay leaks, and what they discovered was wild. Their mission? They're trying to map out the entire landscape of GTA 6 before Rockstar Games even releases the official game. And guess what? They're actually making some serious headway. This is all about the ongoing GTA 6 mapping project. So how did this whole endeavor start anyway? It's an interesting story that not many folks are aware of. You see, there was a similar craze back when GTA 5 was announced. Back in 2011, a group of dedicated fans took it upon themselves to predict and sketch out the layout of GTA 5's terrain. How did they do this? By meticulously analyzing every single trailer that Rockstar Games dropped in the year leading up to the game's eventual release in 2013. The surprising part? When the game finally hit the shelves, a substantial chunk of what these fans had mapped out turned out to be surprisingly accurate. Sure, there were a few locations that were a bit inaccurate, like the military base being off and the dam placed in the wrong spot. 
Also, there were some variations in the overall shape of San Andreas, but considering they solely relied on Rockstar's official footage and had put in two years of work, their accuracy was pretty commendable. Now imagine this. If they could pull off that level of detail with just the trailers, think about what these enthusiasts could achieve with the leaked, under-the-radar stuff that slipped out prematurely. Plus, add in an extra year of combing through details and data. This mapping project is being led by a user called Dupzor, who is the project manager of this whole thing. On September 18th, 2022, when a massive leak dropped over 90 minutes of GTA 6 footage, the map enthusiasts went into full gear. While I can't exactly showcase the leaked content here, what really sparked the interest of the community were the coordinates embedded within the developer's HUD. These sneaky numbers revealed the exact whereabouts of the player concerning the game map. And let me tell you, GTA 6 fans wasted no time diving into this goldmine of information. With these coordinates in hand, the community went Sherlock Holmes mode, meticulously mapping out the game's terrain and identifying key locations. For instance, in one intriguing clip from the leaks, Lucia and Jason were caught in the act, robbing what seemed to be a Waffle House. This incident was marked by a simple white dot on their evolving map project. But it wasn't just a random dot, it was a significant clue. By cross-referencing the coordinates provided in this clip with other glimpses from the leaked footage, they managed to calculate the spatial relationships between different spots showcased in the leaks. This detective work allowed them to gauge distances and plot out the relative positioning of these places within the game world. However, it didn't stop there. The community didn't solely rely on leaked footage. They combined their detective skills with the official trailer, and using a blend of educated guesses and hard data, endeavored to include every conceivable road, building, and landmark featured in the GTA 6 map. The goal? To create a comprehensive and accurate representation of the game's virtual world based on all available tidbits of information. It's a fascinating process that demonstrates the dedication and passion of gaming communities in piecing together the puzzle of what to expect in GTA 6. Since the leaks hit, the GTA community has been on a mission, working tirelessly to piece together the game's map. Their focus has mainly been on sketching out the main areas, the cities, towns, and key landmarks. It's been quite a collective effort, with everyone trying to contribute and fill in the blanks based on whatever clues they could find. Then, the trailer dropped, and it was a whole new ball game. Among all the fast cars and flashy scenes, Rockstar slipped in a subtle surprise for the observant fans. After a few days of dissecting the trailer frame by frame, someone spotted it, a tiny image hidden in the bottom right corner of the ending screen. And guess what? It looked like a map snippet. Naturally, the community went into full detective mode. They put on their magnifying glasses and compared this mysterious map with the one they'd been building from the leaks. There were some similarities, especially with the layout of the right side and the presence of separate islands at the bottom, surrounded by water. But here's the catch. That image was pixelated to the max. It was like trying to figure out a puzzle with half the pieces missing. The lack of detail made it nearly impossible to confirm if it matched their map. This whole revelation sparked a heated debate among fans. Some folks started wondering if Rockstar deliberately threw this low-res map nugget to mess with their heads. Could it be that Rockstar is messing with the community, leading the GTA 6 mapping project into the wrong path? It's pretty odd for Rockstar to include this map as it was deliberately placed. When it comes to safeguarding the details of their upcoming games, Rockstar is notoriously tight-lipped. So, when those leaks dropped in 2022, it really threw a spanner in the works for the company. It's kind of a deja vu situation, considering a similar thing happened back when GTA 5 was in the spotlight. I can't help but wonder if Rockstar did this deliberately, you know, as a deliberate move to shake things up and keep everyone guessing. But then again, we, the GTA fans, are pretty good at concocting theories out of thin air. Now, about that mysterious, highly detailed artwork nestled in the official wallpaper, that's what's really piqued my interest. It's like this odd piece that stands out from the rest, making me think it wasn't just randomly thrown in there. There's gotta be some intention behind it, right? The big question swirling around is whether it's a sly misdirection or a subtle clue for the savvy gamers. But honestly, we won't get any answers until the game hits the shelves, or maybe, if we're lucky, after another sneak peek in a new trailer. The GTA 6 mapping community dove headfirst into dissecting this artwork, but truth be told, there wasn't much to work with. So, they've been sticking to the stuff they can actually confirm. Oh, and those maps floating around, especially the ones from IGN and PC Gamer? They're more like creative interpretations. Think of them as speculative mock-ups cooked up by the mapping community based on their hunches and educated guesses. There's a whole lot of imagination at play there, but none of it has received the official stamp of confirmation. 
The GTA 6 mapping project might not be dropping any bombshells about unknown locations in the game, especially considering how the gameplay leaks already spilled quite a bit on what's in store. Now the heart of this community effort lies in the finer details. They're all about pinning down the exact spots where these landmarks and locations are going to be placed within the game's vast world. However, let's be real here. They've barely scratched the surface, covering roughly just 10% of the entire map. Still, kudos to them for the tremendous effort and progress they've managed to make with what they have. What's confirmed, though, is that this map in GTA 6 is going to be an absolute beast, nearly double the size of the already sprawling map in GTA 5. They've made strides, particularly in fleshing out the Miami Beach region seen in the trailer, those gorgeous Venetian islands from the breathtaking aerial shot, and even narrowing down the location of Lucia's incarceration in the game. Looking ahead, this ongoing commitment over the coming years will gradually unveil more insights into what we can anticipate from the GTA 6 map. The anticipation is real, and it's fascinating to witness how this mapping endeavor will continue to shape our expectations for GTA 6. Looking at the timeline, it's pretty clear that both the completion of the project and the release of GTA 6 are still a considerable number of years down the road. But let me tell you, the dedication and hard work displayed by this community are nothing short of remarkable. Honestly, they deserve way more recognition for what they're doing. If you're keen on staying updated with the latest progress, or even lending a hand to this endeavor, I strongly recommend hopping onto the GTA 6 Mapping Community Discord. You'll find the link in the description below. These individuals have a monumental task ahead of them. But you know what? It's an incredibly intriguing project. Back in the days before GTA 5, I didn't even know something like this was happening behind the scenes. But now, as we patiently wait for 2025, Every snippet of information or rumor about GTA 6 gets me all excited. We'll delve into the most recent iteration of the GTA 6 mapping endeavor. We'll explore the freshest alterations introduced to the map, including newly incorporated locales and adjusted road placements. Additionally, we'll examine some intriguing revelations stemming from the inaugural official trailer, such as the appearance of a swordfish. Furthermore, we aim to tackle one of the pivotal queries surrounding GTA 6, the extent of Rockstar's intention to amalgamate multiple states into the fictional entity of Leonida. We'll sift through all available clues, encompassing leaks and insights from the initial trailer, to shed light on the potential inclusion of Georgia in the game. Let's kick off by scrutinizing the latest rendition of the GTA 6 mapping endeavor. This most recent update, which debuted just a few hours ago, represents the pinnacle of this extensive fan-driven mapping project. Here's a peek at the current state of the GTA 6 map. We've got Vice City and Port Gilhorn in the mix, with tweaks made to both cities, along with some other spots on the map. Keep an eye out for changes like the prison from the opening shot and the gator keys. To kick things off, there's a fresh addition to Vice City known as Waning Sands. While details about this neighborhood are mostly speculative at this point, it's believed to be the setting for a pivotal scene from the trailer. You know, the one where Jason and Lucia dodge past a few police officers in their getaway vehicle. In this vicinity, you'll find the Evergreen Mall Center, prominently featured at the start of the scene. Keep an eye out for a sign on the right side of the frame, showcasing various stores set to be part of this plaza. In a recent mapping video, there was some speculation about whether this plaza would be fully accessible. While only part of the name MLE is visible at the top of the sign, it seems the mapping community is also leaning towards it being called Evergreen MLE. However, the exact location of the MLE within the plaza is still up for speculation. Notice how the buildings on the map are marked in red? Well, there are a few other speculative additions to Waning Sands. These include a gas station, Sailbolt K condos, and Cricket Club condos. Here's what we're using as a reference. You can catch a glimpse of the gas station roof along with other nearby buildings. In a previous video, we floated the idea that this could be Top Golf in Dalal, Florida. However, it seems unlikely now since the placement doesn't quite line up. But hey, let's hold off judgment until we know more. Now, let's talk about some updates in the positioning of various elements. The placement of several buildings, basements, speculative roads, metro, rail, crosstown, downtown, and Brickle has been tweaked. We're using yellow and purple lines to show the speculative metro and railway in Vice City. The metro system has seen some significant enhancements, especially in its connectivity to Vice City International Airport and the area between Crosstown and Brickell. The buildings in this vicinity have also been reorganized to more closely resemble their real-life counterparts. Speculative roads and highways have been adjusted to better fit the new placements. We've also made slight adjustments to the rotation of the prison, from the opening scene with Luke to align with new evidence. Additionally, we've fine-tuned the positions of some trailer markers in the stockyard area. 
such as those for the car meet in Windwood and the bikers in Little Haiti. In terms of location changes, Leaf Links from the previous map version has been moved to Virginia Key, meaning earlier speculations regarding Leaf Links are no longer applicable. Furthermore, based on new radar map evidence, the shape of Picnic Island has been altered. Heading down south, you'll notice that Hamlet is no longer labeled as such. Instead, it's reverted to its real-life name, Homestead. This change suggests that Hamlet might be situated elsewhere in the game. Now, shifting our focus to Port Gellhorn, the other major city on the map, it's also undergone some updates. We've added more speculative details for the area across the body of water on the other side of Buer Bridge, incorporating new evidence into the mix. So, to sum up, those are the latest updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Before we wrap up, let's delve into an interesting discovery from the first official trailer. I'm not into fishing, but I noticed this in the trailer, and my first thought was a swordfish. But I could be wrong. Is anyone who knows more about fishing able to confirm? Let me know what you all think this is. Well, that's quite an intriguing find. Personally, it seems like a house decoration to me, but I'm eager to hear your thoughts in the comments below. In the next part of this video, we'll tackle the question about Georgia. On display in the leaks and backed up by inside journalists, the game will feature a plethora of locations that focus on Miami and the surrounding areas. The two main locations of the game are Vice City, based on Miami, and Port Gellhorn, which lifts direct locations from Panama City. As well as this, it seems Rockstar have brought down and featured locations from Georgia, including a prison and mountain ranges not present in real-world Florida. I'm curious, do you think Georgia will make an appearance in GTA 6? Let's examine the evidence we have so far. There have been some recent findings, so let's kick off by checking out this Reddit post. Georgia evidence. In the leaks, there's a mention of canyon etchings, along with the other ambient events, which I thought couldn't be in or based in Florida. The nearest canyon to Florida is Providence Canyon State Park in Georgia, and is only 2.5 hours away from Florida. This also may explain Red Hill Forest and the testing of Scree Hills in the leaks. There's also a couple mountains, or large hills, seen in the trailer. The first looks more like a large hill in North Florida, probably for hill climbing, but the second one at the end of the trailer looks like a Georgia mountain, like the ones seen in the leaks. First off, this individual is discussing a clip from the leaks, where a developer is seen firing an assault rifle at a vehicle while Lucia is in the background. They've noted several ramps in the clip, suggesting developers use them to test vehicles on different slopes. The clip also shows various types of ramps listed, including MTB ramps, hill climb, mud drag, scree hill, mud drag string, and crash tests, as well as MX tracks. The speculation is that Rockstar might have been testing the scree hill due to its resemblance to locations in Georgia. Additionally, two shots from the trailer show hills, one at the 59 second mark where someone jumps on a table, causing it to break, revealing multiple cars ascending a steep hill in the background, and another in the final shot where Lucia kicks down the door to a convenience store, showing another hill or mountain through the window. Let's delve into the comments and see what the community thinks about these hills. Are there similar hills in Florida? Or has Rockstar taken some creative liberties and introduced hills from Georgia? Ekanfinaka is a place in the game, shown by the leaks. And Ekanfinaka is literally the old name for a swamp in southern Georgia. Not to mention we saw a big hill small mountain. I've lived in Florida for a long time. There are no hills anything like that in the state. Northern Florida has some hills, but nothing like that at all. The hill in the leaks resembles the Blue Ridge in northern Georgia. It's a fictional state. It could be a collection of features from four or five states for all we know. Two hours outside of Florida is hardly breaking the concept. I'd imagine much of the urban landscape will be much like Florida, with the outskirts being closer to Caribbean, or as you said, Georgia. There's a separate post talking about these mountains in GTA 6. We know GTA 6 is being based in Florida, a relatively flat state so it'd be obvious to think that the game will stay true to its setting. However, one interesting thing I found in the diner robbery footage from the leaks is that a huge mountain can be seen in the far distance, particularly around the part where Lucia starts approaching the police car from the passenger side. I'm not sure if anyone else has noticed this, but it's interesting to note, considering Florida is the flattest state in the country lol. Maybe we can go to other states? The area does resemble rural Georgia. Thoughts? I think it will be more similar to RDR2 than past GTAs where it's only one state. I bet the map will be a hybrid of Georgia and Florida. If not, then Florida and most likely another country like Cuba, or some South American country with mountains. Yes, probably we can visit the state of Georgia. A few weeks ago, someone found out that the prison you can see in one clip is from Georgia as well. Multiple states in the game. 
The Florida Scout Lady mentioned Rockstar Scouting interiors in Florida and other states in the southeast. Hopefully this means we get towns, or maybe cities in these other states, instead of simply hilly terrain. As this individual pointed out, there's a prison visible in one of the leaked clips, and it bears a striking resemblance to Augusta State Medical Prison. Situated in Grovetown on the county lines of Columbia County and Richmond County in Georgia, United States, this facility houses primarily male inmates with occasional female inmates and has a capacity of 1326. Built in 1982 and operational since 1983, it operates as a close security prison. Augusta State Medical Prison was one of the seven prisons involved in the 2010 Georgia prison strike. With such solid evidence pointing towards Georgia, or at least a portion of it being featured in the GTA 6 map, it's worth noting that Rockstar has done similar things before. In GTA San Andreas, for instance, they created the state of San Andreas, which is a blend of California and Nevada, with Las Venturas mirroring Las Vegas. GTA 6 has been announced, and it's caused a whole bunch of rumors to swirl around. We've got a list of stuff that's actually confirmed for the game, so let's dive in. Now, the game isn't coming out anytime soon. Rockstar Games is still working hard on it. But thanks to some leaks, we've got some inside info on what to expect. We're talking vehicles, game physics, and the main characters, Lucia and Jason. Plus, we've got details on the map, the huge open world, activities, and all the weapons you can play with. There's also a bunch of cool stuff going on with NPC AI, RPG elements, and some new gameplay features. People are pretty hyped about all this, and they're chatting up a storm about what GTA 6 is going to be like. Now let's check out the vehicles in the game. The GTA forums did a solid job gathering this info, so shout out to them. So we've got confirmed vehicles like the Blista Compact, Ocelot Locust, and something that looks like a 90s Buick Skylark. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. There are a bunch of other cars too, without official names, like a 90s Chevy Caprice, a 2-016, present Chevy Malibu, a Chevy Sonic, and a 2018 to 2022 Honda Accord. Rockstar usually gives these cars funny names. Other rides include the Albany Primo, Benefactor Shafter LWB, something that's like a mix of Ford Explorer and Tahoe from the 90s or 2000s, a 2-018, present Toyota or RAV4, with Lexus NX vibes and a Mercedes grill, the Pegasi Tauros, a 1980s Jeep CJA Scrambler, a 5th Gen F150, a G20 conversion van, a Brute Camper, a Vapid Speedo, H5 Mixer, Metro Mover, D-Class Sheriff SUV, Mobatsu Sanchez Livery, Nagasaki Street Blazer, a 1970s Ford Ranchero, a 1971 Buick Estate, an Albany Emperor, D-Class Turbo Sabre, Yoga Classic, The Contender, and Saddler. And don't forget the Slam Van Pickup, Bobcat XL, an updated Regina, Alpha, Gauntlet Classic, Moonbeam Helion, Boxville Go Postal, an unknown Albany car that's based on a 1959-60 Cadillac, a Rebel, some Asian sedan, Ferrasi or Ferroci, Baller, Novak, Buffalo STX, Alpha and Fudo, a Benson, NF890, Buffalo with no sports bumper, and the Stanier and Landstalker. With all these vehicles, GTA 6 is going to be quite the ride. Now let's talk about some gameplay clips making the rounds on social media. They give us a sneak peek at missions and what Rockstar is up to. One clip shows Lucia, our main character, trying to rob a place called Hank's Waffles, a diner. In this early test, the non-player characters look kinda generic and are jokingly called dummies in the game. The NPCs react to Lucia's aggressive moves, and their animations show they're pretty freaked out, kind of like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. During the robbery, Lucia can aim her gun at a hostage, giving you the choice to rob or have a face-off. Taking a hostage adds some spice to the crime. Jason, the other protagonist, is there too, and you can interact with both characters during the heist. Jason pushes Lucia to hurry up and make a clean getaway, hinting at a Bonnie and Clyde style partnership, which lines up with earlier leaks about the game's story. People are even saying that Lucia and Jason look like Eva Mendes and Ryan Gosling from the Place Beyond the Pines movie, but we're not sure if the game's story will follow a similar path. Lucia and Jason look like they're in their late 20s. You can switch between them in the game using the controller's D-pad. When the cops show up, Lucia can threaten another hostage, and it leads to a face-off with the police outside. The outdoor area looks like it's inspired by Northern Florida with all the greenery. While trying to escape, Lucia and Jason and rack up two wanted stars, but instead of a shootout, they skillfully maneuver through parked cars and hijack a police cruiser. You can tell it's an early part of the game from the tutorial-like prompts, including one about the police getting smarter and remembering cars involved in crimes. The clip ends with Lucia driving off in the stolen police car, and Jason assures her they can shake the cops. But their getaway ends
ends with an accidental crash at an old car wash. In the next mission, Jason and Lucia hit up a strip club called Jack of Hearts and run into Dre, who's chatting with another lady. Dre talks about his music dreams and hints at someone named Boopy. During this chat, we get messages from two new contacts, Billy and R.B. Shaw, through a WhatsApp parody. The early footage shows a minimap that looks like the one in GTA V, with icons that probably stand for missions from characters labeled WM and YJ. As they head up to the VIP second floor, Dre has a run-in with DJ Tip, who's upset about waiting for drinks. Dre steps in, but it's clear that Tip isn't the most popular guy. Dre moves on, and that's where the clip ends. Just remember, this is early development footage, and things might change as the game gets closer to release. Another leak spills the beans on more than 500 world events, encounters, and easter eggs you'll come across while playing. There's too much to cover, but I'll mention a few interesting ones. You'll find stuff like missing tourists, yard sales with new clothes, an event that's a bit like the insurance fraud thing in Saints Row, a voice in the storm drain that might remind you of Pennywise, a Bonnie and Clyde mystery that spans different places, and a workout challenge that suggests fitness activities are back. Players can also stumble upon an island camp, DUI tests, UFO sightings, an animal house, a swamp safari, and even the possibility of playing some crazy golf. There's a hint that the basketball court might be back too. Events like fishing, Satanist houses, backyard wrestling rings, and mansions with big cats offer a bunch of different experiences in the game world. Now, let's talk about the main locations in Grand Theft Auto 6. Ambrosia has Ambrosia Farms and the Tarmac. Bayside Copperhead, the Everglades or Grass Rivers, Fairyland and Fairyland Forest offer different environments. The Keys region includes places like East Key, Low Key, and spots like a garage, gas station, and liquor store. Lake Okeechobee has a motel, prison, and racetrack, while Little Haiti, North Beach, and North Miami come with places like gas stations, hideouts, and liquor stores. Port Gellhorn offers a variety of spots to explore, like an abandoned building, basketball court, beach, bingo hall, bowling alley, car wash, fishing store, fruit stand, gas station, motel, pawn shop, police station, quick shop, raceway, soccer field, and trailer park. Red Hill has a forest, South Beach features a boardwalk, gym, hotel, ocean drive, and park. South Miami Sundown includes a beach and tarmac, and Vice Beach covers Vice City suburbs and Washington Beach. There are also other interesting places like an abandoned hotel, observatory, fountain of youth, homeless community, Malibu Club, Monument of Leonida, Redneck Yacht Club, Spaceship House, Underwater Research Facility, and Dinosaur World. According to info from the GTA forums, Grand Theft Auto 6's open world is estimated to be at least two and a half times the size of GTA 5 ES, giving players a massive world to explore. The game seems to take cues from the successful approach in Red Dead Redemption 2. Promise a well-designed open world with intriguing mysteries. We've spotted some real-life Florida locations in GTA 6's development footage, like the Homestead Miami Speedway turned into the Port Gellhorn racetrack, and recognizable places such as Portofino Tower, Sombrero Key Light, Solar Amphitheater Bayfront Park, and Lone Depot Park. Even the 1000 Museum, a high-rise condo in Miami, is in the game, showing Rockstar's attention to detail. A metro map that's a match for Miami's real one suggests a deep immersion in the game world. The lush landscapes and greenery might hint at a move into Georgia but that's just speculation until we get official word. Details like the Vice City Neighborhood Police Department resembling the Miami Beach Police Department show Rockstar's creativity and world design. As always, we're waiting for official announcements to see how all these elements come together in the final game. Until then, the mystery of Grand Theft Auto 6 keeps fans excited. There's a recent leak suggesting that Alexandra Cristina Ecavari could be the voice behind Lucia in Grand Theft Auto 6. Her voice from a demo reel seems to match up with Lucia's leaked dialogue. We've covered a ton of info about Grand Theft Auto 6, from gameplay details to new features. It's important to remember that the game might still be a couple of years away from release, so we'll have to be patient. Now, let's dig into some interesting findings from the leaked clips. We see Jason and his pals hanging out by an in-ground pool in a lower-income neighborhood, cracking jokes about a parody of social media called Life Invader. It's all about brain downloading and poking fun at Jay Norris's demise, classic Grand Theft Auto humor. The leaked clips also give us a peek into early police AI testing, showing NPCs using cover better during gunfights. In one scene, Jason robs a diner worker with an assault rifle, and we see some dialogue options that look like they're from Red Dead Redemption 2, but they might just be placeholders. Jason's new ability to go prone is a fresh addition to the franchise, and a scene in a thrift or antique shop hints at the option for robbery, maybe even a place to sell stolen items, which adds depth to the gameplay. 
there are animation tests for Lucia and Jason, doing stuff like jogging, stopping, and ducking to avoid gunfire. Rockstar's developers also tested vehicle crashing physics, with a car driving over an overpass. Highway signs mention North Beaches and Lake Leonida on Interstate 97, with the current exit leading to Washington Beach. In another scene, Jason stumbles upon a shipping container full of cash and a motorbike. Various development clips show changes to the inside of a vehicle, suggesting new vehicle designs or customization options for players. Throughout the clips, there are various interactions with NPCs in the open world, like characters taking selfies, which makes the game's world feel more immersive. Another mechanic borrowed from Red Dead Redemption 2 is the ability for characters to pick up and carry bodies, adding depth to the gameplay. We also see other influences from Red Dead Redemption 2 in different aspects of the game. The weapon wheel system is similar to Red Dead Redemption 2 with limited weapons and items you can carry. Lucia has a loot bag that might be used for robberies or stealing stuff from different places. The inventory system lets players hang on to health kits and other items for temporary buffs, and Jason can pick up and drop weapons from his inventory. In one scene, Jason enters a gang member's territory and takes cover behind a truck, and we see unique animations for characters reacting to getting shot. There's a mention of a jetpack that was previously leaked by Tom Henderson, and it's inside the Jack of Hearts Club. The game includes parody logos for social media like Snapchat, Instagram, and Life Invader. Characters have different hairstyles, and there are realistic details, like Lucia's bra showing under her shirt, which adds to the game game's realism. A new feature is the ability for players and NPCs to hold their guns sideways, which changes things up in combat. We also see Jason doing some fancy rifle tricks in the air, and another character in a parking lot shoots at him while holding his pistol sideways. The clips mention animations like Overdose, which hints at unique actions or events in the game. There are hints of horses and horse riding mechanics, likely inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2. The open world is packed with places to explore, like motels, metro stations, restaurants, pawn shops, and supermarkets. Small details like being able to get a gumball from a quick shop machine add to the overall experience. The game adds RPG elements, like managing food, drinks, sweat, fatigue, and even taming animals, which gives players a deeper gameplay experience. There are references to mountain bike ramps and city bike rentals, promising fun cycling activities. The leaked clips talk about loads of weapons, from regular firearms like pistols, shotguns, and rifles, to unusual ones like golf clubs, baseball bats, and crowbars. Players can also use tools like flashlights, binoculars, and lock Picks, promising a heightened level of realism compared to previous iterations. We'll explore the notable enhancements Rockstar has implemented, creating a more sophisticated system that elevates the gaming experience. By examining various sources, we aim to provide a comprehensive overview of this navigation system, offering insights into what Rockstar has in store for NPC navigation in GTA 6. Let's delve into the details of this intriguing patent. System and method for virtual navigation in a gaming environment. Let's break down this patent for a moment. Essentially, it gives us insight into how non-playable characters operate within the game environment. They explain that NPCs' actions are controlled through artificial intelligence, allowing for real-time decision-making based on preset algorithms. In many systems, this is achieved through nodes and links, where each node contains important data that influences NPC movement. For example, in a game involving vehicles, this data could include factors like vehicle speed, lane width, road type, and number of lanes. Now, these nodes are essentially waypoints that NPCs follow to navigate from one point to another. In simpler sections of the road, these nodes might be connected linearly, guiding NPCs straightforwardly. But in more complex areas, like junctions, the nodes become more intricate. Take a basic intersection, for instance. A vehicle approaching it would have several exit options, leading to a branching network of nodes. In older systems, like the one used in GTA 5, NPCs might make decisions at these junctions based on simple rules, sometimes leading to behaviors that seem a bit random. However, this conventional method has its limitations, especially when it comes to handling various factors like weather conditions, changing lanes, parking cars, or anticipating road exits. In these situations, the old system could falter, as NPCs might not adapt well to the dynamic environment. One downside of the node-based system is its limited capacity to replicate real-life factors that humans naturally consider. Another drawback is its constraint in automating NPCs effectively. Due to memory and processing limitations, only a set number of NPC-controlled cars can be spawned in the game. Naturally, players crave a more immersive experience with a greater number of NPC-controlled cars on the road. Moreover, in conventional systems, NPCs often repeat the same actions, and some may even disappear as players get closer to them. 
Additionally, in GTA 5, the system relies on local traffic avoidance for NPCs to steer clear of collisions. This means that NPCs continuously scan their immediate surroundings each frame for any obstacles like vehicles, pedestrians, or objects. Using a front-facing polygon, they gather data about the road layout and calculate the optimal steering angle to dodge obstacles or stay on the road. It's worth noting that this process occurs independently for each frame, without any reference to previous frames. This results in slower detection, as the system may not recognize a road blockage promptly. Instead, it interprets the obstruction as something to be avoided, without distinguishing it as a complete road blockage. Recognizing these limitations, Rockstar has engineered an NPC system that addresses these shortcomings of conventional systems. This advanced system efficiently manages NPC nodes and node graphs, yielding optimal outcomes while circumventing hardware and software constraints. NPCs in this system demonstrate heightened spatial awareness and adaptability, capable of altering routes based on real-time data from the environment. Moreover, this innovative system synergizes with the tagging mechanism discussed in earlier discussions. Through node analysis, the system identifies tags, such as indicating a road leads to a junction unsuitable for large vehicles. Consequently, large vehicles are deterred from entering. Furthermore, NPCs within this system consider various attributes of vehicle types, models, including speed restrictions, acceleration and braking capabilities, top speeds, cornering abilities, and vehicle size. NPCs will consider a plethora of data from their surroundings, leading to heightened situational awareness. Video games are populated by NPCs who are able to make real-time decisions based on their environment. Games use a specific system for NPCs to traverse the game world. However, this system is very limited, and thus the decisions NPCs can make are very limited as well. NPCs in vehicles only consider their close vicinity, but nothing else. Also, to avoid collisions, NPCs only consider the last generated frame and base their reaction on that. No prior frames are considered. Rockstar has invented a new system which aims to fix these issues and make NPCs more intelligent and thus make the game world feel more realistic. NPCs can now consider factors like traffic, as well as account for changing lanes when parking cars, anticipating a road exit, weather conditions, and the like. There are more than a predetermined number of NPC-controlled cars in the game now for a realistic experience for the player. Vehicles can now plan accordingly in case there is any type of road blockage. This also applies to police cars being able to navigate their way through traffic during a chase. I'd like to highlight another breakdown of the patent, which dates back three years ago. Let's delve into it. Take away from yesterday's patent post. I've read over the patent post from yesterday, and I noticed a lot of people missed the most exciting information in it. I'll sum it up in non-technical language. It's essentially a method to improve vehicle AL when driving currently. When NPCs drive on the road, they can sense a few cars around them to determine crashes or other things to drive around. This is dumb AL, as it has very few factors to take into account, and requires a lot of computational resources. This is why vehicles despawn when far away to free up the CPU. Rockstar's patent describes a system that primarily will change this and give NPCs more situational awareness. They will essentially have an objective of navigating from one location to another, simplified, but is essential in making routines similar to RDR2, and be able to take into account other external factors. Coolest of all, NPCs will still exist when your game isn't rendering them in this implementation. Specific examples mentioned by Rockstar state they will be able to use weather conditions, traffic, and crashes to determine where to go. Some areas might be dangerous in the rain, they might avoid it. If an area has too much traffic, they will avoid it. Possibly destructible environmental areas could be reacted to. Similar to bridges in Just Cause, this point is speculation, however. Cars will also be able to take into account number of lanes and speed in their decisions. NPCs will be also able to take into account high-speed chases and be able to navigate if they themselves are speeding. There will also be other reactions that are mentioned specifically, such as changing lanes before a highway exit appears, and as Rockstar puts it, driving slower on residential-type roads or having to perform certain maneuvers to avoid oncoming traffic on single-lane streets. The large part they also mention is this implementation uses a lot less processing power. The NPC schedules can be relayed by a central server, they could possibly use the console itself as well, and it doesn't require the same constant surrounding analysis as previous Al Rockstar mentions, this will allow them to have denser traffic with the same resources. 
A large aim also seems to be realism. Rockstar's patent mentions realistic reactions to various factors as being the main intent. For example, NPCs will each have different driving ability levels based on the driver and the car. Essentially, each driver will have its own profile and have unique driving characteristics as well as skill level. Some might speed, others might not. You can anticipate enhancements like volumetric clouds and better lighting, which mark a significant leap forward, even compared to Red Dead 2. One notable detail from the leaks is the presence of heavy fog, a feature not prominently seen in GTA 5, except for snowy conditions. Advanced weather systems will play a more prominent role in GTA 6, adding depth and immersion to the game world. As for characters, we already have insights into several individuals set to appear in the game. While Jason and Lucia are the main protagonists, the leaks have revealed the existence of other characters. These include Dre, not to be confused with Dr. Dre, Sam, a friend of Dre, Kai Wyman, Zach R.B. Shaw, and several others like Vicky, Iris, Shanice, and YJ. It's quite astonishing that we even have details about their heights. Lucia stands at 5 feet 3 inches, while Jason measures 6 feet 1 inch tall. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. We've also got details on three different gangs set to make an appearance in Vice City. Sand for Sand, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the Far Right Militia. Moving on to tools and items, the list is quite extensive. You can expect to find an autodialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, a color tool, painkillers, a pool cue, trauma kits, a golf driver, various food and drink items, a golf putter, a USB drive, a golf iron, a crowbar, a golf wedge, a torch, a slim gym, a tracker jammer, a duffel bag for stashing your loot, cigarettes, and a backpack, again for storing your loot. When it comes to weaponry, the leaks confirm several options, a rocket launcher, an assault rifle, a baseball bat, a polymer pistol, a knife, a bolt-action sniper rifle, a Molotov cocktail, a spear gun, which is intriguing, a smoke grenade, a compact SMG, a flashbang, a micro SMG, a hunter sniper rifle, a heavy machine gun, an auto rifle, and a pump action shotgun. The weapon wheel system will be divided into three sections, weapons, equipment, and gear. This setup is reminiscent of Red Dead Redemption 2, where you had access to your weapons, items, and horse all in one interface. Notably, we've seen glimpses of the ability to hold different weapons in each hand, and there's an additional quick item inventory in the bottom left corner of your screen. In a video clip, we observed an NPC firing at Jason, and shortly after, we noticed that Jason's health was low. A tip appeared on the left side of the screen, indicating, you were injured, your health will regenerate slowly. Open your weapon wheel and use a recovery item to replenish your health faster. Unlike GTA 5, where your health regenerated only up to 50%, in GTA 6, it seems that you may regenerate to full health naturally, albeit at a sluggish pace. However, if you want to expedite your healing process, you can employ a medical item. We've got confirmation on seven open world activities that will be available in the game. Currently, these activities include dice, golf, fishing, and races. Additionally, there's a van shipment activity, and in one of the videos, you can spot the spawning location for a delivery van event. This location is near the industrial area of Port Gelhorn, and it's noteworthy that there's a warning poster about security cameras in this area, suggesting the need for caution while attempting to rob the van. Now, regarding robberies, if you've seen the leaks, you might remember the Hank's Waffles robbery, which was quite impressive. Jason and Lucia took on the challenge of robbing this massive diner. In another clip, when Jason was entering a store for a robbery, it became apparent that he possessed an ability allowing him to see through walls. The leaks also mention events related to searching vehicle trunks for something valuable, or perhaps finding nothing at all. Moving on, there's another event type called Deliveries mentioned, specific to Port Gelhorn. It's somewhat challenging to predict the exact nature of these events, but that's all the information we have for now. As for enterable buildings, Grand Theft Auto 6 is set to offer more opportunities for exploration. Confirmed locations you can enter include the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, the Jack of Hearts, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundries. Now, let's discuss multiplayer. In the leaked files, we did come across one multiplayer clip, and in the bottom left corner of the screen, it displayed PL2 of 32, indicating that there were two players in the lobby out of a possible 32 slots. This mirrors the setup seen in Red Dead Online and GTA Online. While it's mentioned as 32 slots, it's worth noting that the player count is actually capped at 30, with two additional spots reserved for spectators. While hopes may be for larger lobbies in GTA 6, at least during this testing phase, they were exploring the feasibility of 30-player lobbies. Let's delve into collectibles in the game. 
During a scene in one of the clubs with Lucia, we can observe a developer placing a cardboard box on the ground. Notably, these boxes appear to be lootable, with a circle icon indicating their interactability. The debug text on this box reads, collectibles underscore car underscore pass, suggesting that these boxes will contain car part collectibles. Furthermore, there's mention of Wyman car parts boxed generic used, which has sparked speculation that players may collect car parts specifically for a character named Wyman. It's inferred that both Jason and Wyman share an interest in classic cars. Moving on, we've got collectible hats. In a video featuring Jason in an apartment, a developer is seen interacting with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat in the debug text. This implies that one of the ambient activities in the game will involve gathering various articles of clothing, which adds an intriguing layer to gameplay. Now there's a comprehensive list of brands featured in the game, which I won't read out individually, as many may not be of significant importance to the storyline. Instead, I'll display them on your screen for your reference. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to take a closer look. Moreover, we have a list of confirmed animals in the game. As of now, the roster includes snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, boars, wading birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and whales. Keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list, and there's a good chance we'll encounter even more wildlife when the game officially launches. These are simply the animals we have information on at this point in time. In the ongoing exploration of the forthcoming Grand Theft Auto installment, a plethora of new gameplay mechanics has come to light. These enhancements promise to augment the player experience in a variety of ways, ushering in a fresh layer of dynamism and immersion within the game world. First and foremost, players can now maneuver while ensconced in cover. This feature introduces a newfound level of flexibility during engagements, allowing for more strategic positioning in combat scenarios. Additionally, the ability to assume a prone position, a feature conspicuously absent in previous iterations of the game, adds an exciting dimension to gameplay, affording players the capacity to lie flat on the ground, potentially enhancing stealth and tactical maneuvers. Furthermore, the inclusion of loot bags offers a means to store surplus items, expanding inventory management options. An interesting addition is the capability to both drop and retrieve weapons, affording players greater adaptability in response to evolving circumstances. During intense firefights, a novel underfire animation engages, wherein the player character instinctively shields their face from incoming projectiles, providing a more immersive combat experience. In the aftermath of enduring a severe blow, players are granted the opportunity to enact self-revival, potentially turning the tide of adversity. In aiming down sights, the option to seamlessly switch shoulders grants players a tactical advantage, facilitating improved positioning and target acquisition. Moreover, hand-to-hand -hand combat now includes the ability to execute grabs, diversifying the melee combat mechanics. A noteworthy addition to the game is the implementation of buddy communication, embodied in the buddy comms and buddy ping system. Although specific details remain undisclosed, it is plausible that these features will facilitate coordinated actions between the two main characters, Jason and Lucia. Vehicle combat has witnessed a transformation, as shooting from car windows now entails the complete egress of the player character from the window, enabling full 360-degree firing capabilities, thereby revolutionizing vehicular combat dynamics. The intriguing Eagle Eye system, seemingly exclusive to Jason, allows for a form of wall-penetrating vision, although its applicability to Lucia remains uncertain. Enhancements also extend to interactions with in-game elements. Players will find themselves endowed with a broader range of interactions, such as the capacity to carry bodies, engage in robberies, issue threats, and converse with non-playable characters NPCs, during heists. Moreover, the ability to collect additional items, including beer bottles and cans, enriches the gameplay experience. Shifting the focus to new gameplay systems, one particularly exciting addition is the concept of money laundering. During the Hank's Waffles robbery, an icon associated with the car wash property, a washing machine adorned with a dollar sign, has been identified as indicative of money laundering. This suggests that players may have the opportunity to purchase specific types of businesses with the intent of laundering illicit funds in the single-player mode. Moreover, the inclusion of fences introduces a layer of illegal commerce within the game. These fences serve as intermediaries for players to sell illegal items, providing a means to offload contraband and potentially profit from illicit endeavors. The the inclusion of hacking mechanics is confirmed to some extent in the game. Lucia is equipped with a set of intriguing tools, including a tracker jammer, immobilizer bypass, USB drive, and an auto dialer. As of now, it remains unconfirmed whether Jason will also have access to these items. Historical leaks from a few years ago hinted that Lucia would be the designated hacker, so the extent of hacking abilities for each character awaits further clarification. Among the event types within the game, two distinct categories emerge, pragmatic cool and 
chaotic and romantic cool. While specific details surrounding these events are not fully disclosed, they introduce intriguing possibilities for players to navigate. Furthermore, during robberies, players will have the capacity to issue commands to the other character involved. In a video clip from the leaks depicting a robbery, a tip notification suggests checking in with Jason or holding for more options. This implies that players can give their partner commands during a heist. Notably, prompts to instruct Jason to either surrender or follow indicate a degree of control over both characters simultaneously, simplifying coordination compared to relying solely on AI behavior. The witness system and police recognition within the game hold significant implications. During the Hank's Waffle robbery video, an interesting detail surfaces regarding the Wanted Level Stars interface which includes the term full description. This strongly suggests that witnesses within the game possess comprehensive knowledge about the player character. Consequently, law enforcement is expected to recognize the player once Lucia enters a police vehicle. Additionally, a transition is observed from no vehicle description to full vehicle description in response to Lucia's actions. This implies that even after losing a wanted level, if the police spot the player in the same vehicle, they will react accordingly, potentially leading to an arrest or hostile encounter. During the robbery sequence, Jason can be seen actively preventing customers marked with yellow icons above their heads from calling the authorities or fleeing the scene. Notably, an NPC within the diner exhibits a yellow icon above her head. Following Lucia's exit from the diner, the icon begins to flicker. Subsequently, as Lucia approaches a police car surrounded by law enforcement, the icon shifts to red. The female NPC then departs from the diner, making eye contact with Lucia before hastening away. These developments underscore the sophistication of NPC interactions, presenting a notable advancement in the game's artificial intelligence systems. The prospect of item sharing between the characters Jason and Lucia is on the horizon. A notable example emerges from a video clip where Jason pilfers items from containers, opting to retain some while distributing others. This cooperative element extends to the unlocking of doors and gates, exemplified in a video featuring Jason within the Sand for Sand area, which, if you recall, is the moniker of a gang in GTA 6. In this particular clip, Jason stealthily maneuvers past a red truck, revealing a door from an import garage building bearing the descriptor door panel locked in its debug text. In juxtaposition, a gate within the same clip indicates door unlocked, signifying the necessity of unlocking specific access points. Subsequently, we delve into an extensive catalog of new features, commencing with an upgraded AI system. In a visual excerpt, the enemy AI exhibits an inclination to open fire upon Lucia when she pivots to face them. This hints at AI entities possessing a heightened acumen for discerning opportune moments to engage in combat. Impressively, AI units adapt their elevation relative to surrounding obstacles, steering clear of potentially disadvantageous head-glitching tactics. Furthermore, a prudent alteration manifests as AI adversaries opting to lower their stance during weapon reloads, a judicious move compared to reloading while exposed in the open. Enhanced AI combat tactics are evident in their lateral strafing maneuvers during shootouts. Notably, NPC behavior has undergone substantial refinement. As discernible in the leaked materials, AI characters no longer traverse the game world in solitary isolation, but now frequently assemble into groups. This intriguing development is reminiscent of a feature previously observed in Red Dead Redemption 2, where NPCs often moved in cohesive units. An illustrative instance materializes in a video where Lucia, carrying a duffel bag, shares the sidewalk with three individuals attired as tourists, who engage in animated conversation while strolling past her. This signifies a notable departure from GTA V, where pedestrians predominantly ambulated in solitary fashion, contrasting with the forthcoming inclusion of group dynamics, perhaps even encompassing couples or social cliques, enhancing the very similitude of the game world. A notable addition to the gameplay dynamics is the option to voluntarily surrender to law enforcement during a robbery. The consequences of such an action remain shrouded in uncertainty, warranting further exploration upon the game's release. Furthermore, the mundane act of purchasing gumballs from vending machines emerges as a potentially restorative action. While it can be surmised that gumballs may offer a healing effect, Concrete details regarding their function remain pending confirmation. In a nod to realism, akin to GTA V, the forthcoming installment acknowledges the accumulation of dirt on your character's clothing, reflecting the wear and tear endured during your escapades. The hair and facial hair systems exhibit intriguing variability, with different versions of Jason observable in the leaks sporting varying hairstyles, including long hair, short hair, stubble, and clean-shaven looks. While not definitively confirmed, this strongly alludes to the introduction of a hair growth system akin to the one featured in Red Dead Redemption 2. Given the precedents established in the latter game, the likelihood of such a system in GTA 6 appears high. 
Expanding the repertoire of actions available to players, the ability to consume items directly from your inventory is showcased. When Jason visits a gas station, the inventory reveals options for wine, soda, and fruit consumption, implying that you can partake in these items at your convenience, akin to the mechanics present in Red Dead and GTA Online. Introducing a novel event type named Cop Trap, the game incorporates scenarios where law enforcement sets up traps at multiple locations. While the precise details of these traps remain undisclosed, it is apparent that police will employ diverse tactics to ensnare players. An overhaul in the police system introduces the concept of time until cops dispatch. In this iteration, criminal activities do not instantly summon law enforcement. Instead, players are afforded a brief window to execute an escape before the police response commences. The inclusion of security cameras as a surveillance mechanism adds complexity to evading detection. Unlike the conventional implementation in GTA Online, these cameras employ a detection meter, reminiscent of mechanics seen in games like Payday 2 or Payday 3. Players must act swiftly to evade the camera's line of sight within a specified time frame, akin to a filling bar to avoid detection. This novel approach to security cameras introduces a fresh layer of challenge and strategy to evading law enforcement. Players will have the newfound ability to restrain non-player characters, NPCs. The primary method, as gleaned from the leaks, involves the use of zip ties. This restraint option becomes particularly pertinent during robbery scenarios, where players can employ zip ties to immobilize NPCs. A novel feature that comes to light is the capacity to loot vehicles. A fleeting glimpse in the Hank's Waffles video reveals a button prompt in the bottom right corner of the screen, labeled Examine SUV. This hints at the prospect of inspecting random cars and potentially engaging in vehicular theft. To make car theft more engaging, an advanced hijacking system is on the horizon. The existence of the immobilizer bypass device previously discussed suggests that pilfering high-end vehicles will pose a greater challenge. Additionally, an item known as the Slim Jim will facilitate unlocking older model cars. These mechanics collectively point to the notion that hijacking automobiles will become a more intricate endeavor, with the potential for car theft endeavors to end in failure. Furthermore, two intriguing event types emerge, namely carjacking, cat, and carjacking, advanced AI. These events suggest that the vehicular hijacking process will incorporate nuanced elements, potentially involving the interference of an AI-controlled entity. GTA 6 promises to deliver an augmented vehicular experience through improved vehicle damage and handling. In a displayed video clip, as Lucia attempts to evade pursuing law enforcement, cars suffer more impactful damage. Notably, various parts of the vehicles, such as the front fender and hood, demonstrate more realistic deformation and fragmentation. The in-game interiors now feature functional GPS and waypoint systems on the dashboard, enhancing navigational convenience for players driving in the first-person perspective. Additionally, players have the option to enter a car via the passenger seat, offering flexibility in vehicle interaction. A hallmark of GTA 6 is its meticulous attention to detail. Players can encounter raccoons engaging in behavior, such as rummaging through trash cans and pilfering food bags. These instances are categorized as world events, denoted as raccoon climb out of garbage, raccoon rummage trash, and raccoon steal food bag. While numerous other subtle details enrich the game world, they are too numerous to enumerate here. Interested individuals can explore these intricacies further through the provided link. Expect a heightened level of auditory realism in GTA 6. Weapon sounds exhibit enhanced clarity and realism with greater volume. The sounds of bodies impacting the ground will resonate with a more substantial thud, evoking a heightened sense of impact. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements with heightened realism, while items will produce varying auditory responses contingent on the surrounding context. In essence, sound design in GTA 6 aims to authentically replicate real-life auditory experiences. Fascinating developments. Several months ago, a colossal trove of leaked data unveiled a wealth of intriguing random events, world encounters, that promised to enrich the GTA 6 experience. While I won't delve into all of them, the list is nothing short of captivating. Events range from mundane occurrences like parking disputes to more enthralling incidents such as donut burnouts, protests, and even someone suffering a concussion. The prospect of navigating the lifelike world of Vice City, teeming with such diverse activities, is undeniably exhilarating. I strongly recommend pausing the video to peruse this remarkable compilation. Additionally, we have been privy to an extensive catalog of vehicles slated to appear in GTA 6. These vehicles, gleaned from both in-game leaks and files, I encourage you to peruse this comprehensive list at your leisure. It resides on page 30 of the document. Furthermore, the leaks have divulged a plethora of confirmed locations within Vice City and its environs. Naturally, Vice City itself takes center stage, while several districts and neighborhoods will pepper its landscape. 
Notable locations include Edgewater, North Bay City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Port Gellhorn, intriguingly, appears as a separate city akin to Sandy Shores or Polito Bay from previous iterations. The list extends to encompass Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, The Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Ekin, Fanaka, Underwater, and Relief. Each of these major locations contains a multitude of sub-locations, a testament to the meticulous world-building evident in the game. As if this weren't enough, the dedicated community has endeavored to construct a speculative map of GTA 6 based on coordinates extracted from the leaks. While the precise layout of the map's northern region remains uncertain, the map preview encapsulates the sprawling Vice City to the south and Port Gellhorn on the left. We'll delve into the upcoming changes to the AI systems in Grand Theft Auto 6 by Rockstar. We'll explore a patent that introduced is a groundbreaking system unprecedented in gaming, promising a revolutionary shift in how AI operates within games. Additionally, we'll delve into other intricacies concerning AI and non-playable characters in GTA 6, including insights from a job listing at Rockstar's new LA studio, shedding light on NPC dialogue. We'll also examine NPC behaviors in response to their environment and their integration with social media, enhancing immersion and complexity in player interactions. Let's kick off with Rockstar's innovative AI system set to debut in Grand Theft Auto 6. Described by Rockstar as the most significant and immersive evolution of the series, the emphasis on immersion is evident in their patent filings. We'll focus on one particularly intriguing patent, unveiling a new system poised to revolutionize AI in gaming. Considering Rockstar's commitment to delivering the most immersive experience yet, it's evident that NPCs and AI will play pivotal roles. This patent specifically pertains to animations in GTA 6, aptly named System and Method for Virtual Character Locomotion Back in 2020, Rockstar Games unveiled an innovative system that will debut in GTA 6. Now the details might sound a bit complex, but essentially, this patent outlines a fresh approach to animating characters and imbuing them with dynamic intelligence. These characters will now possess a kind of virtual brain, allowing them to react to their environment, other NPCs, weather, and even their mood, influencing their animations on the fly. Before this advancement, each character's animation had to be painstakingly recorded in a studio equipped with motion capture technology. This process involved attaching markers to actors' suits and compiling animations into what's called an animation tree. This method was resource-intensive, limiting the variety of animations Rockstar could include in their games. For instance, in GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, each NPC had its own animation tree, containing all their actions. Animation trees essentially stack animations, blending them together seamlessly and transitioning between them based based on player input and in-game conditions. Additionally, motion matching, a feature seen in GTA 5 and RDR 2, automatically selects animations based on player actions and the surrounding environment. This results in fluid and lifelike character movements, such as running while shooting, creating a more immersive experience for players. With GTA 6, Rockstar introduces an innovative system designed to optimize resources and streamline animation data. This approach allows for more content within the game while offering a broader array of animations. It shares similarities with motion matching but diverges in its utilization of a new framework. Rather than relying on conventional animation trees, character animations will be predominantly data-driven, adapting dynamically to environmental cues. These animations will be categorized into distinct motion types, representing unique character styles. Each character will possess a designated motion type, enhancing the depth and realism of their movements. As an illustration, let's consider various states such as tired, injured, and normal, each corresponding to a set of animations. Additionally, every character will possess their own blackboard, a virtual representation of their current state and surroundings. This blackboard stores crucial data including the character's condition, location, weather, temperature, and more. Utilizing this information, the game's code dynamically selects appropriate animations or styles for the character, enhancing their responsiveness to the virtual world. For instance, in the Ocean Drive scene from the trailer, we observe a character seated on the sidewalk. As a group of NPCs pass by, he attentively observes them, reacting accordingly to their presence. With this system, the gameplay experience is poised to become even more immersive. It will prioritize environmental data, including the presence of other NPCs and vehicles, alongside factors influencing the character's mood. Consequently, NPCs will exhibit previously unseen levels of reactivity, shifting focus to a noteworthy job listing from Rockstar's recruitment opportunities. Last year, Rockstar opened a new studio in Los Angeles, 
From what we know, it's purely a new motion capture studio, so they have another one besides the one in New York. Mainly to record NPC dialogue, probably. This discovery confirms that. I checked Rockstar's careers page just now, and there's a job offer at Rockstar LA for associate writer, pedestrian, and ambient dialogue. This could indicate that they are still writing and recording GTA 6 NPC dialogue right now. This suggests that the development team is currently engaged in scripting and recording NPC dialogue for GTA 6. You can find the specific responsibilities outlined in the job description provided. It says, write funny, character-driven, and unique dialogue for our ambient population. Work with key stakeholders to understand and support the technical requirements for player-led, dialogue-based interactions with our ambient population. Provide exciting dialogue that works within the strict constraints of a complex game system. Undertake self-motivated research and leverage that research to enrich your writing. Understand and match the tone of our games. This underscores the commitment of Rockstar to ensuring that GTA 6 remains true to its franchise roots. Aligning NPC dialogue with the established GTA universe bodes well for the game's authenticity. Shifting gears to another aspect related to NPCs, let's delve into how they'll integrate with social media. Not only will NPCs exhibit more lifelike behaviors and interactions with their surroundings, but they'll also engage with social media platforms, a novel addition to Grand Theft Auto 6. Here's a rundown of the phones observed. NPCs will be equipped with various phone models, as evident from both images and the trailer. Notably, NPCs will actively engage with their phones, which boast fully functional cameras and displays, an improvement over GTA V. For instance, in a scene from the trailer set on Ocean Drive, an NPC can be observed capturing photos or videos with their phone. The displayed imagery accurately reflects the NPC's point of view, suggesting the possibility for NPCs to record and share in-game content on the virtual social media platforms. Let's delve into an intriguing Reddit post that delves into this aspect further. Here's why NPC recorded TikToks aren't as far-fetched as you think. A common speculation point I see on this subreddit is the potential for NPC recorded TikToks for the game's social media that was teased in the trailer. Like someone filming you commit a crime and you later seeing that post online. Many have dismissed this as far-fetched in terms of development complexity, but I wanted to discuss why it's plausible. Firstly, I think we've already seen a system that could serve as a base for building a TikTok-like system, the Instant Replay, Rockstar Editor from GTA 5. Given this game is more of a sandbox with physics rather than a competitive shooter, where replay systems are typically seen, it's even more impressive to consider this system in GTA 5. It accurately records and replays events just as they happened, with every car, ragdoll, etc. Moving just as it did originally in the moment. The tech behind this isn't actually recording like a camera and replaying, it's really just recreating it, which again makes it impressive how much time Rockstar put into it, making it accurate. To me, this feels like what could be used as a base for a system where NPCs record their own videos from their perspective. This next thing is something I could have sworn I remember hearing long ago, but can't seem to find, and was hoping someone on here remembers too. Back before GTA 5's launch, there were details revealed through various interviews, magazines, etc., and I remember hearing or reading something about being able to watch your own crimes on Weasel News on the TV. This obviously didn't end up in the game, but there is a slight remnant of it in GTA Online. Am I the only one who remembers this being mentioned for single player though? Maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. Anyways, this last point is actually from the trailer. At the 033 mark, in this scene we see a lot of NPCs hanging out on a busy street, and one NPC in particular recording on his phone. As we know Rockstar's trailers are always all in engine, no CGI cinematics, so I think it's worth noting that it looks as if his screen is accurately showing what he's looking at. My screenshot is zoomed in. But if you got hat mark on the trailer, you can see it matches up to what he's looking up at. We're about to explore the intricacies of the Vice City mapping project, unraveling the mysteries of the latest map iteration. Join us as we meticulously analyze the details and draw insightful comparisons between the expansive GTA 6 map and its predecessors within the series. Our adventure doesn't stop there. We'll be immersing ourselves in the leaked information from 2022, unveiling a treasure trove of open world activities. Brace yourselves for a comprehensive list featuring every nook and cranny on the GTA 6 map, showcasing not only new additions, but also the anticipated return of beloved locations from the iconic GTA Vice City, as hinted in the leaks. Let's kick off this exploration by delving into the heart of the GTA 6 mapping project. For those familiar with it, this official endeavor aims to provide a scale-accurate representation of what players can expect in the actual game. The map 
sprawls across two major cities, Vice City and Ford Gorn, and every detail is meticulously curated from leaks and the official trailer. Now, for those wondering about the seemingly expansive green spaces on the map, it's important to acknowledge the limitations of our knowledge. The apparent emptiness serves as a stark reminder of the scarcity of information currently available. The top portion of the map, appearing cut off, isn't indicative of boundaries or future expansions, but is rather a canvas awaiting details yet to be unveiled. Addressing rumors about the map's size, speculation abounds that GTA 6 will boast three major cities. While Vice City and Port Gorn are confirmed, the third city remains shrouded in mystery. There's a buzz that it might be Yorktown, potentially located north of Port Gorn. However, specifics about the placement of these locations marked in red are still elusive. Now, let's delve into the exciting prospect of exploring key locations on the GTA 6 map. These names, extracted from the official trailer and leaks, offer a tantalizing glimpse into the rich and diverse world awaiting players. Get ready to traverse the landscapes of Yorktown Red Hill Fairyland Forest, near Berryland, a whimsical Disneyland parody, Ambrosia Lake, Leonida, Lore North, Beaches Belleville, Ica, Vice City, Hamlet, Grass Rivers, and the enigmatic Gator Keys. As our journey unfolds, stay tuned for more updates, insights, and speculations surrounding the continually expanding universe of GTA 6. The road ahead promises thrilling surprises, and we're here to navigate it together. Now, let's delve deeper into the intriguing details surrounding Port Gellhorn. The bustling streets and structures around Hank's Waffles Diner, a focal point for a heist according to the leaks, spark anticipation for dynamic in-game events. The meticulous rendering of these locales not only captures the essence of the city, but also invites players to immerse themselves in the narrative-driven experiences that Rockstar Games is known for. Examining the speculative changes in Port Gellhorn, the notable relocation of the Port Gellhorn airfield suggests a strategic reimagining of the city's layout. This shift, coupled with the adjustment of the Port Gellhorn raceway, hints at a carefully planned urban evolution, potentially altering the dynamics of the airport's placement within the city. The industrial sector of Port Gellhorn provides a gritty backdrop, with the iconic United States prison maintaining its imposing presence. The inclusion of the pawn shop, prominently featured in the trailer, underscores the developer's commitment to integrating real-world elements seamlessly into the game environment. Venturing southward, areas like Second Fina and Belleville remain enigmatic, their constant relocation adding an element of unpredictability to their final positioning on the map. Ambrosia La Pearl, steeped in mystery, teases players with its undisclosed location, heightening the sense of intrigue surrounding these diverse neighborhoods. Our exploration now takes us into the heart of Vice City, where a substantial chunk of the urban landscape unfolds before us. While speculation abounds regarding the placement of red buildings and names, the gray structures, sourced from both the trailer and leaks, serve as tangible landmarks, anchoring our understanding of the evolving cityscape. Vice Beach emerges as a vibrant district, adorned with numerous hotels that were meticulously analyzed in previous videos, providing a tangible link between the virtual world and its real-life counterparts. Washington Beach, with its diverse skyline, beckons players with promises of new adventures, enhanced by the improved streets of Stockyard, Little Haiti, Rock Ridge, and Crosstown, as showcased in the trailer footage. Descending further into the enchanting realm of Grass Rivers, we come across the enigmatic district of Hamlet, speculated to mirror the charm of Homestead, yet the persistent red designation leaves us tantalizingly in the dark about its precise location. This region reveals fascinating land Marks, including a power plant nestled at Turkey Point and a sewage treatment plant, painting a vivid picture of the industrial landscape as gleaned from leaked footage. The presence of Grass Rivers itself, along with the mysterious Gator Keys and the alluring sundown, adds an extra layer of intrigue to this particular segment of the expansive GTA 6 map. A moment of appreciation is certainly due to the dedicated individuals steering the mapping project, whose commendable efforts grant fans an evolving and detailed peek into the GTA 6 world. Their commitment to accuracy and meticulous attention to detail foreshadow an immersive gaming experience, setting the stage for the excitement surrounding the official release. Now, let's delve into a truly mind-blowing comparison that has set the gaming community abuzz. Our gaze shifts to the juxtaposition of Los Santos from GTA 5, Liberty City from the iconic GTA 4, and the highly anticipated Vice Beach from GTA 6. The comparison not only highlights the need for potential adjustments in Vice Beach's size, but also emphasizes the extraordinary density and detail that players can expect. Acknowledging the observed need for a slight enlargement of Vice Beach, the visual impact remains nothing short of extraordinary. 
The comparison underscores the incredible density that GTA 6 promises, reminiscent of the lively streets and vibrant atmosphere experienced in the streets of GTA 4's Liberty City. Speculation regarding the buildings in Vice Beach, as showcased in the mapping project, heightens the anticipation, with the close proximity of structures promising an unparalleled level of immersion and detail, evoking nostalgia from the beloved GTA 4 era. This meticulously crafted map stands as a colossal playground, harking back to the bustling streets that made GTA 4 a standout title. The intricate detailing, the tightly packed urban landscape, and the anticipated density all point towards an experience that pays homage to the franchise's esteemed roots while pushing boundaries in the expansive open-world genre. The enormity of GTA 6, both in size and detail, heralds a new era in gaming. The astonishing comparison, showcasing the potential density and intricacy of Vice City, is nothing short of a revelation. A special acknowledgement goes out to the mapping community for their outstanding work in envisioning an entire Vice City characterized by a multitude of buildings. The level of density and detail promised is unprecedented and is set to redefine the benchmarks of open-world gaming. The concept of an expansive map allegedly featuring three cities elevates the excitement, presenting players with a gaming landscape of unparalleled proportions. Now, delving into the realm of open-world activities revealed in the 2022 leaks, the thrill intensifies. With four confirmed activities and the potential inclusion of dice, GTA 6 promises a diverse range of immersive experiences. Golf, fishing, and races are confirmed elements that contribute to the dynamic and engaging environment that Rockstar Games is crafting. A particularly intriguing moment unfolds in the trailer, as Jason, visibly nervous, speeds away from a robbery scene, with Luke clutching the ill-gotten cash. In the distance, the iconic Top Golf in Doro makes a cameo, a real-world entertainment destination located in Doro, Florida. The climate-controlled hitting bays, HDTVs, and sports bar elements create an enticing backdrop for players to explore. This real-world integration adds a layer of authenticity, bridging the gap between the virtual and real worlds. Fishing, poised to be a serene yet potentially rewarding pastime, is expected to be available from various locations in the vast ocean. Races, an integral and adrenaline-pumping element of the GTA series, are set to deliver high-octane excitement that fans have come to expect from the franchise. Furthermore, a detailed list from the GTA 6 document unravels every location visible in the leaks on the GTA 6 map. This includes not only new and thrilling destinations, but also the return of iconic locations from the beloved GTA Vice City. The inclusion of familiar locales adds a nostalgic touch, creating a seamless connection between the past and the present within the expansive world of GTA 6. Now let's embark on a comprehensive exploration of some of the familiar locales, making a triumphant return in GTA 6, as unveiled by the mapping project. These recognizable names from the GTA Vice City era evoke a sense of nostalgia, rekindling memories of past gaming experiences. Leaflinks, Malibu Club, Washington Beach, Ocean Beach, Ocean Drive, Ocean View, and Little Haiti are just a few examples of the beloved spots that players will once again encounter in the immersive world of GTA 6. It's a poignant journey back in time as we rediscover these iconic locations, now reimagined and seamlessly integrated into the highly anticipated GTA 6 map. Venturing further into the extensive list of locations, our focus remains on the map, unveiling an array of intriguing places that contribute to the game's richness. Among these, the Jack of Seas nightclub takes center stage, having made appearances in both the official trailer and the leaks from 2022. While a detailed reading of every location is beyond the scope, feel free to pause the video and explore these fascinating spots at your own pace. From quaint small stores to the distinctive stone sculpture gracing Vice Beach, each location adds layers of detail and authenticity to the sprawling game world, some of which have been exclusively revealed through leaks. Shifting our gaze to Port Gilhorn, a diverse array of captivating places awaits discovery. The car wash, soccer field, a bustling basketball court, the Ambrosia Farm, and the intriguing King Neptune statue are just a glimpse into the eclectic offerings in this part of the map. We're delving into the character creation aspect of Grand Theft Auto 6 and exploring how in-game NPCs will be generated. We'll take a look at a recent patent filed by T2 Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar Games, which sheds light on the character creation process within the world of GTA 6. The patent reveals details about a new system developed by Rockstar Games, designed to streamline character creation and leverage the capabilities of current generation consoles more effectively. As game worlds grow in size and complexity, filling them with diverse and compelling characters and environments becomes increasingly challenging. Artists are tasked with creating every individual in-game object, from characters to buildings and interiors. As these worlds expand, the computational and design efforts required also increase. 
However, Rockstar Games has once again demonstrated innovation by developing a system that optimizes the rendering of 3D objects, ensuring efficiency without compromising on detail. This system addresses the challenges posed by the ever-expanding scope of game worlds. The patent we're examining in this video is titled System and Method for Game Object and Environment Generation. This video takes a deep dive into the generation of building interiors and characters within the expansive world being crafted by Rockstar Games. The patent starts off by providing an overview of how objects function within 3D spaces, as explained by Rockstar. Objects used in 3D graphics, often called assets, are a combination of geometry data, for example, the 3D model, and data for textures associated with the geometry data. An asset may be formed of one object, or it may be a composite object made from a combination of objects. The objects that form a composite object may in different contexts be used as independent assets unrelated to the composite object, or they may always be used as a subset of a larger object. They've provided an intro to how 3D objects function in games, aiming to help us grasp the workings of their latest invention. Persons of skill in the art will recognize that many different sorts of assets, such as vehicles, can be made from collections of subcomponents. For example, one aspect of the game might require a room, say a dining room. That entire dining room could be considered one game asset, but it will likely be created from several other assets, such as a table, chairs, dishes, glasses, wallpaper, flooring, etc. The glasses and chairs are independent of the larger dining room asset. As another example, a virtual person in the game, such a background character in a scene, would also be an asset. A person asset might be made up of a number of interchangeable objects, such as legs, a torso, arms, a head, etc. Because the person is made up of interchangeable objects, a variety of different persona sets can be made by mixing and matching different constituent parts. But a body part like a torso might always be used as a subpart of a larger body object. Prior art systems generally include libraries of game assets. The systems and methods of the present disclosure add a metadata layer to these game asset systems and provide modified development and game architectures to take advantage of the new metadata layer. This metadata layer includes tags that are added to the object in order to provide useful descriptors. In a preferred embodiment, these descriptors are completely freeform and without context. This allows developers to specify information about objects as needed without having to be locked into a ridge pre-configured schema. Rockstar's new system introduces an additional metadata layer and utilizes tags for enhanced functionality. In the next section, they provide examples illustrating how this tagging system will operate. For instance, characters and virtual beings within the game world will be assigned tags like skinny, chubby, average, attractive, ugly, young, old, and so on. They explain that this tagging system won't just apply to the 3D models or textures alone, but to the entire object package, which includes the model and its associated textures. Essentially, every aspect of a particular character will be tagged. For example, skin textures for elderly characters will be tagged as old, while arms and torsos for heavier characters will be tagged as chubby. They also list other tag examples provided by Rockstar, such as sporty, hipster, emo, preppy, nerdy, luxury, basic, new, worn out, business, and formal. Moreover, each component can have its own tag, and there can even be collections of assets with tags. Furthermore, they explain that all these assets can be stored on servers for easy developer access via an application programming interface, API. Additionally, these assets can be stored in various formats like XML, limited text, binary encoding, relational databases, and others, depending on the developer's proficiency. The systems and methods of the present disclosure further advantageously use the metadata via a rule set layer that uses the metadata to increase the speed and efficiency of game rendering, world or scene creation, game script execution, and rendering fidelity. In particular, the rule set allows designers to add context to the tags and to control their use by setting rules for the asset usage and the asset's interaction with the game and other objects. These rules are unrestricted and can be used to provide a wide variety of different capabilities and restrictions for objects. Let's take a look at how these tags will be put into action. For instance, if a jacket object is created, a tag like additional top garment can be assigned to it. Then. During gameplay, certain rules might search for this specific tag to identify objects like jackets. Furthermore, in a cold setting, the character's health stat may decrease at a slower rate because the character stays warm with the additional top garment. Moreover, the additional top garment tag could enhance rendering efficiency. 
For instance, if a character wears a shirt underneath a jacket, the shirt occupies memory space. Since the shirt is mostly covered by the jacket, Rockstar plans to replace the full shirt with a smaller texture, only containing the visible parts under the jacket, thus conserving memory. The combination of tags and the rule set can also be used advantageously for procedural generation of game objects and environments. For example, a game scene could be created in a game script by calling assets based on tags, rather than calling the assets explicitly. For example, if the game scene called for virtual characters in a movie theater, the game designer could simply specify a need for predetermined X number of characters with casual dress. If the designer wanted a sci-fi movie playing at the theater, it might also call for a higher percentage than normal of characters tagged nerdy. The metadata rule set interface would interpret these general instructions at game runtime to randomly generate virtual characters fulfilling those needs. Additionally, this system offers increased efficiency. For instance, the entire character object doesn't need to be packaged before streaming to the GPU for processing. Instead, they can be generated directly on the GPU using existing model and texture assets. Of course, Rockstar aims to utilize as many preloaded GPU textures as possible while maintaining a realistic variety in the scene. Moreover, this system allows them to control the number of preloaded textures used in a scene. For instance, more textures can be preloaded for complex scenes and fewer for simpler ones. The goal of this video is to provide an overview of the key aspects of this new system, so I won't delve into every example described in the patent. Turning to the details of the specified metadata, in a particularly advantageous embodiment, the following metadata is included for each model and texture, IDs, property tags, match tags, randomization restrictions, expression data, and optimization data. While this selection of metadata has been found advantageous, different groupings and subsets of these tags can be mixed and matched as needed to accomplish particular design goals without departing from the spirit and advantages of the present disclosed inventions. The uses, embodiments, and benefits of each of these fields are described as follows. These elements constitute the metadata, and while I won't delve into each one individually, they essentially represent the various tagging methods Rockstar employs to organize models and textures. These tags facilitate accurate and efficient filtering and sorting of assets. The GTA 6 community has just found some major clues left by Rockstar Games, and it was under our nose the whole time. GTA 6's Trailer 1 revealed a ton of new things about the game off the bat, but recently, there's been even more developments that show off the GTA 6 main character story, Lucia. We learn a bunch of new things about her background, so if you're not interested in potential spoilers, this may not be the video for you. This information is directly from Rockstar Games, so this is the real deal. So getting into the details of Lucia's jail cell, let's focus on those newspaper clippings. I'll do my best to zoom in and enhance the image, but there are two distinct white clippings with black text. One of them appears to have a portrait, and I can only speculate that it might resemble a modern-day wanted poster. This could be showcasing the story of Lucia's alleged crime, accompanied by an image like a visual representation of what she's accused of. It's almost akin to a wanted picture that you'd find in a newspaper. This phenomenon isn't unheard of in real life. When people do something noteworthy or newsworthy, it's not uncommon for them to keep a record of it, like an article, and put it up on their wall as a sort of memento. It's like a snapshot of a moment in their life, even if it involves legal trouble. So Lucia might be preserving this particular newspaper clipping as a piece of her history, whether it's for sentimental reasons or perhaps as a reminder of the circumstances that led to her incarceration. Now let's broaden the scope a bit and draw comparisons to previous GTA protagonists. Take Michael DeSanta, for instance. His mansion has family photos on the walls. Franklin Clinton's house features similar personal touches. Even Trevor Phillips, in his trailer, has pictures that tell a story about his life. It's not just confined to the HD era. Even in the 3D era games, characters had their own way of leaving traces of their lives in their living spaces. This inclination to personalize living spaces is fascinating. In Lucia's case, the jail cell is an unexpected canvas for her personal story. It makes you wonder about her background, the choices she made, and the events that led her to that cell. Exploring these details could give us a deeper understanding of who she is and why she's in the predicament we find her in. Considering Lucia's attachment to those newspaper clippings, it raises interesting questions about her attitude towards her crimes. Perhaps she finds a sense of pride or even enjoys the bit of notoriety or fame she's garnered from her actions. Keeping those clippings might be her way of cherishing the attention or recognition she's received. The prospect of spending a substantial amount of time in prison also suggests that it could involve more than just a brief cutscene, but potentially a series of missions within the jail environment. 
Now, shifting our attention to the picture above the bunk bed, it's a bit of a visual puzzle. While it's challenging to discern details, on the left side, there's a guy with a drink in hand, donning a white t-shirt. Next to him is a woman with voluminous hair, and in the foreground, there's another figure. This composition raises the question of whether these individuals could be Lucia's family. The dynamics and connections between characters are often crucial in unraveling the narrative of any GTA game. Acknowledging my limited knowledge about jail life, it's uncertain whether inmates generally have the privilege of keeping photographs with them as mementos. However, in this specific scenario, it appears that Lucia can. This might imply that the prison depicted isn't a maximum security facility, given the freedom for inmates to keep personal items. While the setting is far from casual, it offers a level of interaction and mobility, allowing inmates to go outside, engage in conversations, sit at tables, and soak in sunlight. The orange jumpsuits signify their status, but the absence of being handcuffed to the ground suggests a certain level of relative freedom. In this context, the allowance of pictures and photographs could offer an additional layer of insight into the characters and their personal connections, providing players with a unique perspective on Lucia's life, both inside and outside the jail cell. Taking a closer look at the latest image, which I've adjusted to bring out more details, there's another intriguing photograph. A guy in an orange shirt catches the eye, positioned alongside two women on the right. The one on the left appears to be sporting a hat and sunglasses, although discerning whether any of them is Lucia remains challenging. They could very well be family members, close friends, or simply individuals from her social circle. Amidst all the uncertainty, Lucia seems notably fixated on reflecting upon her actions and the community's response. Beyond this, it's evident that Lucia maintains a distinct connection with a specific group of people, as indicated by the presence of their pictures in her jail cell. It's not just about her individual experience. There's a shared history captured in those photographs, hinting at relationships that go beyond the confines of the jail cell. Directly below the image featuring the guy in the orange shirt and the other girls, there's yet another photograph. Although the details are obscured, the presence of someone standing in the picture is noticeable. Lucia is seemingly constructing a collage of photos, creating a visual narrative that serves as a repository of memories. These images might play a crucial role in not only grounding her within the context of her relationships, but also providing a semblance of continuity and connection to the outside world. It's worth mentioning that the footage I'm working with is the highest quality version sourced from YouTube, as Rockstar hasn't officially released it on their Newswire page. Despite being in 4K, the YouTube upload might introduce some compromises in image quality, so there could be nuances in the pictures that we might miss. Once Rockstar throws the official trailer our way, we're likely to get a treasure trove of additional details. But for now, let's roll up our sleeves and dissect the snapshots from Lucia's jail cell. Apart from Jason, there's another player in Lucia's story. Stephanie, the Leonid Department of Corrections representative. Picture a different scene, though. Lucia's cell is a far cry from Stephanie's office. In this particular shot, Stephanie's unmistakably holding down the fort in a black dress, center stage on the right. Flip to the left frame, and there she is again, donning a red dress on the right side. Behind her, there's a framed message teasing with, if you miss, but the rest remains a mystery due to some pesky screen glare. Now, let's make a full turn and voila, another Stephanie pick in the bottom right corner. This time, the backdrop suggests a domestic scene, perhaps with a partner. She's got on some bluish shades, slightly different from what we catch a glimpse of later. The background paints a more vivid picture, a collection of books, pamphlets, a conspicuous high visibility vest, and yet another potential newspaper clipping. Whether it's a routine thing or an anomaly, the jury's still out. So, what's the inside scoop on Lucia's backstory gleaned from her jail cell environment? Well, the state of the jail suggests it's seen better days. Peeling bits off the windows, hint at a place with some history. That initial shot with the barbed wire strongly implies it's not a newly minted spot. It's got the wear and tear of time etched into its surroundings. As we immerse ourselves in the intricacies of Lucia's life within the jail cell, the narrative unfolds as a captivating tapestry, each element contributing to the rich story. The subtleties, from the cryptic newspaper clippings, shedding light on her alleged crimes to the carefully chosen photographs, depicting relationships with family and friends, create a vivid and compelling portrait of Lucia's existence, both within and beyond the jail confines. The personal touches within her confined space evoke a rawness that harks back to the legacy of previous GTA protagonists. Lucia's jail cell, unexpectedly, becomes a canvas revealing a story that transcends the conventional GTA narrative. 
It prompts curiosity about her past, the decisions that led her to incarceration, and the intricate web of relationships that define her. The permission granted for personal items like photographs in the jail cell adds an intriguing layer to the storytelling, suggesting a nuanced sense of freedom within the constraints of imprisonment. Lucia's attachment to these items, whether they be newspaper clippings or family snapshots, beckons players to ponder her perspective on her own actions and the recognition she may have garnered. While we eagerly await the official trailer release from Rockstar, it is clear that Lucia's story is woven with complexities and mysteries that leave us yearning for more. The weathered appearance of the jail environment, with peeling bits off the windows and subtle signs of aging, hints at a setting steeped in history, amplifying the anticipation for the unfolding narrative. Thus, with these glimpses into Lucia's world, we find ourselves surrounded by a plethora of unanswered questions. When did she find herself behind bars, and what duration does her stay entail? GTA 6 gears up for the last leg of development, with Rockstar calling back its staff to the office full-time. This intels straight from Bloomberg journalist Jason Schreier, fresh in his latest Bloomberg piece. Today, we're diving deep into what Schreier shared. Known as a trusted voice in the gaming sphere, let's unpack his insights. Let's not waste time any longer and dive right into Jason Schreier's article. Grand theft automaker Rockstar Games asks workers to return to office five days a week. Rockstar Games, a division of Take-Two Interactive Software, will ask employees to return to the office five days a week beginning in April, as the video game maker enters the final stages of development on its next game, the hotly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. In an email to staff on Wednesday, reviewed by Bloomberg, Rockstar head of publishing Jen Kolber said the decision was made for productivity and security reasons. The company has faced several security breaches, including a massive dump of early footage from the new Grand Theft Auto and an early trailer that leaked in December. Kolber wrote that the company also found tangible benefits from in-person work. Making these changes now puts us in the best position to deliver the next Grand Theft Auto at the level of quality and polish we know it requires, along with a publishing roadmap that matches the scale and ambition of the game," she wrote. Return to office mandates have been a hot topic across various industries since the pandemic forced myriad employees to work from home. More recently, many employers have asked staff to return to the office for two or three days a week. A study last month found that remote work did not have an impact on productivity. The issue has been particularly controversial among video game workers thanks to the volatility of the industry and its lack of a centralized workforce. Many of 2023's biggest video game hits, such as Marvel's Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac Games, were developed remotely. Rockstar's in the final stretch of developing Grand Theft Auto 6, hinting at a possible early 2025 launch. With this, we might anticipate the release of a second trailer, along with screenshots and more teasers in the coming months. While fans rejoice, this could mean extra pressure for Rockstar Games staff. Stay tuned here for updates as Rockstar unveils more details about GTA 6. Great news for GTA fans, GTA 6 is making some big changes to the series. We've got a load of interesting info about the game that you should definitely hear about. Just a heads up, the details we've got are from leaked online footage, but sorry, no links or showing it. Still, loads of cool stuff to share, like new animals, AI changes, RPG elements, and more. Let's dive in. Fact 1 interactions with NPCs are getting way cooler. You'll have choices like threatening, robbing, shooting, or restraining them. Some missions will even have gesture-based actions, like Red Dead Redemption 2. Car damage is more realistic, and the insides are crazy detailed, with working dashboards. Fact 2. Let's talk weapons. GTA 6 is changing things up, taking a page from Red Dead Redemption 2. Instead of a big weapon wheel, you'll have slots for small firearms, melee weapons, rifles, and shotguns. No unlimited weapons, but you can drop and pick them up as you go. Fact 3. In the developmental phase, there was a sighting of Arthur Morgan's hat, though it's uncertain if this will make it to the final game. Players now now have the option to surrender to the police during a robbery, which adds a thrilling twist. Police response time has been updated to feel more real, displaying a timer that varies based on the crime's severity. A murder, for instance, prompts a faster response than a robbery. The maximum wanted level is capped at 5 stars in GTA 6, and the possibility of a 6 star level seems improbable in the current gameplay being developed. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. 
Now, back to the video. Fact 4. Police AI has significantly improved from the last game. Instead of rushing in blindly, they now exhibit more realistic and intelligent behavior. If you commit a crime and flee in a vehicle, cops will note the specific vehicle and license plate, making evading them more challenging. Fact 5. Let's talk about the strong emphasis on indoor locations in GTA 6. There's a bunch of different interiors to explore, like nightclubs, motels, hotels, restaurants, pawn shops, supermarkets, fast food joints, gun stores, shooting ranges, and the Vice City metro station. Plus, they've added working elevators for a more immersive feel. Interestingly, there's a risk of players getting banned from stores, which adds a twist. Fact 6. Moving on to the characters. GTA 6 introduces two protagonists, Jason, played by Brian Zampella, and Lucia, portrayed by Alexandra C. Ekavari, who happens to be the franchise's first playable female character. You can switch between them instantly. They're also a couple, drawing inspiration from Bonnie and Clyde. Fact 7 clothing in the game behaves realistically. You can wear accessories like sunglasses, watches, wristbands, and hats in different ways. The detail is pretty cool, with sweat, dirt, and wrinkles adding to the realism. Fact 8. GTA 6, internally dubbed Project Americas, had a code name during development, like GTA 5, called Rush, and Red Dead Redemption, to Bonnier. Originally, the plan was for a bigger map covering North and South America, but changes in Rockstar's approach scaled it down. Still, it's shaping up to be a memorable experience with its features and locations. Fact 9. GTA 6's map is officially bigger than GTA 5. This time, Vice City takes the spotlight, a Miami-inspired area with its surroundings, giving players a vast and diverse landscape. There's even a lake in one of the videos that hints at a significant part of Florida being in the game. Fact 10. Hold on to your seats. The jetpack's back. Shooting out of cars is on the cards too, adding more thrill. And get this, GTA 6 introduces 18 brand new vehicles to the franchise. Fact 11. In GTA 6, you'll bump into various events, like random mugger encounters and NPC-hosted yard sales. There are hints at riding events, which could mean horse riding, maybe even involving the Red Dead Redemption 2 team. Fact 12. New firepower alert. The spear gun's making its first appearance, letting players shoot underwater spears at their targets. Plus, there's a bunch of gear you can use, like binoculars, cut-off tools, flashlights, immobilizer bypasses, slim gyms, USB drives, tasers, zip ties, and auto dialers. Fact 13. The game has RPG stuff like weight and muscle management, seen in the Spool Couple Workout Challenge. Leaked footage showed Jason and Lucia's apartments. For example, Jason's place has a bathtub for in-game baths. Fact 14. Rockstar's planning to add new missions and cities regularly after GTA 6 launches. Whether this is for online or story mode isn't clarified yet. Expect an improved cover system, better than what we've seen in other Rockstar games. Fact 15. Make sure not to overlook the Kingston Hotel. It's a lively spot with pool parties and live music, making GTA 6 his world even more vibrant. Fact 16. GTA 6 gets more interactive with working CCTV cameras that you can wreck. Be wary of cop traps, spots where cops wait to nab you, and be prepared for intense moments with dirty cop shakedown events. Fact 17. As part of the immersive feel, the game includes DUI sobriety tests, but it's unclear if they're for the player character or random NPCs. Rockstar's focus on detail shines, even with fully working gumball machines in the game. Fact 18. The gunplay in GTA 6 resembles what we've seen in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Max Payne 3. It might be worth giving those games a shot before GTA 6 comes out, if you haven't already. And activities? GTA 6 is loaded with options, from fishing and crazy golf to basketball, football and soccer. There are gyms to work out in, a yacht club, and even a racetrack. Fact 19. Get ready for a modern-day setting, post-GTA 5 events. The game is meticulously detailed, recreating many Miami landmarks like a grand tennis court, a bustling football stadium, and a vibrant amphitheater. The map includes an airport and a functional tram system, with an airport stop. And that's not all. The Florida Keys and a swampy region, the Grass Rivers reminiscent of the Everglades, are part of the game. Players can ride swamp boats in this area. Fact 20 weapons are diverse in GTA 6. You've got melee options like golf clubs, pool cues, crowbar and bats, along with a range of firearms from pistols to snipers and RPGs. You can even customize how your character holds weapons. Plus, there's a bunch of throwable stuff like grenades, molotovs, and even golf balls. Fact 21. One major upgrade in GTA 6 is NPC behavior. 
NPCs will come in different sizes and shapes, and their reactions will feel super real. If you wave a gun around, folks nearby might freak out. The game's also getting an intense injury system, including concussions. Fact 22. Next up, the amazing visuals and new features. Your character will grow facial hair naturally over time. Plus, the GTA 6 world will have a social platform called What's Up, kinda like a fun version of WhatsApp. And good news for fans, spoof versions of social media like Life Invader, Facebook, Bleeder, Twitter, and Snapmatic, Instagram, are making a comeback. Fact 23. Now let's talk about our main characters, Jason and Lucia, each with their own and a shared inventory. Your inventory can carry various items like wine, soda, and fruit. Also, there's a duffel bag system for easy transportation of supplies and weapons. Fact 24. Rockstar's being more cautious in storytelling, steering clear of offensive jokes, and being considerate about groups that might feel targeted. The story goes through chapters, like Red Dead Redemption 2's approach. Fact 25 GTA 6 is loaded with side activities, from backyard wrestling and racing to UFO events and beach bonfires. Small stuff matters too, like picking up cans from the ground. Jason and Lucia, the main characters, have special abilities similar to those in GTA 5. Fact 26. Jason and Lucia's safe house is a motel, a hub for their activities. The game's world has various street gangs, each with its own vibe. Characters have different personalities like romantic, chaotic romantic, cool, pragmatic chaotic, and pragmatic cool. Fact 27 gameplay tweaks in GTA 6 include the ability to zip tie NPCs for stealth elements and the option to carry bodies, adding depth to stealth mechanics. Fact 28 robberies are a big deal in GTA 6, ranging from big heists to smaller scores. You've got easy scores like hitting bingo body shops, burnout skirts at Cafe Caraway, clothing stores, food trucks, massage parlors, and more. And now, there's even the chance to rob shipping containers, which adds a whole new level of excitement. Fact 29 gameplay is stepping up. For the first time in GTA, you can crouch and go prone, bringing in some tactical vibes. RPG elements are also in, with hints about hunger leveling and animal interactions, adding depth to the game. Fact 30. Excitingly, the Malibu Club and Ocean View Hotel are back in GTA 6. There are hints at events like Lost at Sea Island Camp and Lost Plane, suggesting possible island scenarios like Guarma from an earlier game. Fact 31. While exploring, you'll meet loads of wildlife, alligators, bears, boars, dogs, snakes, raccoons, birds, frogs, bald cats, and rodents. You'll also spot symbols for plants and toxic waste around the game. Fact 32. In the game, watch out for the Scarface crime scene, maybe a nod to Tony Montana as an Easter egg. There's also a murder mystery called Missing Tourists. Plus, spots for campers are scattered around, hinting at the chance of owning a camper van later. Remember, these details are from development footage, so they might change before the final release. Still, they give us a great peek into what Rockstar's cooking up for GTA 6. 